Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> Whilst we've all been paddling our tootsies at Penzance or licking cornets in Clacton, our island draft have been home on leave. However, all good things come to an end, and much to their various relatives' relief, our lot are on their way back to duty in the launch. Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit it is, Mr. Phillips, sir. Steady at that. Steady at that, sir. Should see the island any time now, Chief. With all due respect, sir, I'll very much doubt it. Huh? <laughs> and why is that? Because we're heading due north and the island's due south. <laughs> if we don't get on course soon, we'll run out of fuel. Well, that's ridiculous, Pertwee. I mean, when we left Pompey, we had plenty for the trip over. Yeah, very likely, sir, but since then, we've been down to Selsey Bill, <laughs> had a quick trip up Southampton Water and been round the Isle of Wight twice. <laughs> well, it's most peculiar. I mean... I could have sworn we had to turn left out of Portsmouth. Yeah, I noticed, sir. You put your hand out and told me to change down. <laughs> yes, that's right. It's not often I boob on seamanship. Well, we're all right now, sir. Look, there's the island. I say, so it is. I knew if we kept going long enough, we'd come across it. Home, sweet, uh... Chief. Huh? I, um... <laughs> isn't it, uh... Isn't that a new jetty? Yes, it is. If you remember, sir, when you uh, clouted the old one with Trout Bridge, it sort of um, sank. <laughs> <laughs> so it did. Better be a bit more careful with this new one, eh? Mm -hmm. Might be as well, sir, yeah. I don't want to take any chances. No, sir. No, no quite, Chief. Just to be on the safe side, I'd better bring the launch in myself. Yeah, there might be a good... No, sir. <laughs> oh, no, sir. No, no, no. Don't do it, sir. A no. left hand down a bit. No, no, look, look, sir. You know what you'll do. You know, you'll know... Straighten her up. Oh, no, Blarney. Straighten her up a bit, it is, sir. Now, um, over a bit on the other lock. <laughs> over a bit on the other lock, it is, sir. <laughs> That's it. Now, coming in now. Easy. 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 Everybody down! <laughs> The master's own. <laughs> oh, hello, Heather. I'm back. So I gathered I heard you land. <laughs> what were you trying to do? Get the launch up onto the parade ground? Oh, very funny. If you must know, I just bumped the new jetty a bit. Which bit? Well, the, the bit that isn't there anymore. <laughs> it, it was just a cross current. Not half as cross as number one will be when he hears about it. Oh, by the way, did you know we've got a new number one? <laughs> Why? Was the old one worn out? <laughs> I, I mean, uh, what for? Well, Lieutenant Price is out on loan to United States Navy. Oh, bother, he's found the buzzer. Well, quick, put your cap on straight. There, that's better. Now, off you go, and remember, first impressions come. Oh, buzzer. <laughs> I wish somebody had short-circuited that thing. Hurry up. Come in. Uh, you shorted circuit? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean you, you buzzed your short, sir? No, no, that is, you shot your kit. Uh, uh, Sub-Lieutenant Report, Philip Singer. Remarkable. Are you always like this? Oh, rather, sir. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, dear. Now I know what Lieutenant Price meant. You do, sir? Yes. He left a note in which he referred to you as the white man's burden. <laughs> oh, did he really? Someone I call that jolly sporting up. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, Lonnie. Uh, have you met Heather, sir? Oh, yes, yes. We get on very well. <laughs> she is delightful. Uh, very well? Very well. Oh. <laughs> very well, sir? <laughs> Mr. Phillips, you're not by any chance engaged to Heather, are you? Oh, no, sir. Not by any chance. We're, um, we're just... Oh, um... well, that's a relief. It's every man for himself, then. Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. Well, I would. So it is. Understood? Oh, very well, sir. Well, now I'd better stroll across to the stores and meet Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. Meet him, sir? Have you made an appointment? <laughs> Mr. Phillips, I don't want to seem a busybody or a snob, but, um... Since when did the First Lieutenant need an appointment to meet his Chief Petty Officer? Well, sir, roughly ever since Pertwee became one. <laughs> well, uh, do you think it'd be all right if the old order changeth, Mr. Phillips? Because I can assure you that I have no intention of giving Chief Petty Officer Pertwee or anyone else a sporting chance. With one possible exception, of course. <laughs> me, sir? No, me. <laughs> Hello? Lieutenant Murray speaking. Ah, this is Commander Bovey, Inspecting Officer Bosworth. I just wanted to welcome you aboard and tell you I shall be coming over to make a thorough inspection tomorrow. And heaven help the lot of you if anything's wrong. I see. Uh, very well, sir. Very well, sir. Oh, shut up. <laughs> what? Uh, nothing, sir. Uh, thanks for the welcome. Very touching. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, well, if there's to be an inspection, I think I'd better go and see Chief Petty Officer Pertwee at once, with or without an appointment. Johnson? Johnson? You know what you are? You're a gigantic, gorging, great greedy guy. <laughs> I'm not. It wasn't my fault. Not your fault? Look, Johnson, is it or is it not understood that when you come home off leave, you bring Chief Petty Officer Pertwee a slab of your mum Min's homemade cake? <laughs> yeah. Right, then where is it? It's all gone. It was a sort of Dundee cake. Was it? Yeah, a sponge with icing in it. <laughs> sponge with icing in it? How can a sponge cake be a Dundee? There's no such thing as a Dundee sponge cake with icing in it. There is, if that's where you left it on the train. <laughs> what do you mean, left it on the train? Look, Johnson, where do you live? At home. No, no, no. <laughs> Which town, you greaseball? <laughs> Plymouth, if you must know. Look, if you were on your way to Portsmouth, what the blazes were you doing in Dundee? I was sitting in the wrong train with my mum Min's homemade cake. <laughs> then the wrong one of you got off. Ah, well, you wouldn't have liked it anyway, Chief. And why not, may I ask? Why not? Your mum Min's homemade cakes have always gone down elegant before. Ah, well, this one wouldn't. It was a sort of over-dundee cake. <laughs> over what? An over-dundee cake. My mum Min burnt it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to get his cinema clinical about it. <laughs> got work to do. Yeah. Now that I'll leave his over, Johnson, it's time for Pertwee's wheels of commerce to start bringing in a lolly again. <laughs> You've had that, you know, there's something you don't know. Johnson, it's high time you tumbled is nothing Pertwee don't know, including how to keep little steaming fat Johnsons grafting until they weigh four stone six. <laughs> oh, I well, see. You know about the new number one, then? No. <laughs> of course I know. I was the first to hear about it. No, what much? We've got a new number one. Stung me, there's a liberty. Just as we've got the old one organised, their lordships play swaps. <laughs> Look, Johnson, Johnson, my son. Listen, Fatty, get up. This is serious. A new number one would throw a proper spanner in chief for the officer Pertwee's works. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> Get back, you giggling, podgy vulture. <laughs> you know the first things number ones do, don't you? Inspect the stalls. Huh. Won't take him long in here, will it? <laughs> no, I have a point there, hardly. Half a dozen blankets, and that's about our lot. Yeah. Well, I could spread them out a bit and make it look more. Yeah, that's very helpful of you, Johnson. 
But how do you intend to spread six blankets about a bit? Well, cut me in half and make twelve. <laughs> Look, do me a favour. That's how we got six. <laughs> but only three originally. <laughs> oh, we should have to get some more gear over here before this new bloke starts snooping around. Well, you'd better get a move on, then he's here. What? Yeah. Ah, oh, good morning. Stores open to ratings only. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> What's she like? Persistent. Ah, uh, look here. Oh, oh, well, 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 well. It's, it's you, sir. Well, well, well. We've no idea that was your sin. No idea. Fancy that. <laughs> well, well. Come in, sir. Welcome. That's better. My name's Murray. I'm your new number one. Yes, I had heard, sir. Had you really? Well, after all I've heard about you so far, Chief, that hardly surprises me. In case you were not aware of it, I can assure you that your name is spoken in hushed tones of reverence and admiration throughout the entire Navy. Not by me, it's not. Watch it, Chaffee. <laughs> Watch it, or Humpty Dumpty is due for another dirty great fall. <laughs> Well, I just thought I ought to warn you both that a commander, uh, Povey, is that his name? Yeah, it's one of them, yes. <laughs> Good. Well, he's coming over to make an inspection tomorrow, and as this is the first time I shall be on the receiving end of his inspection, I felt it'd be rather jolly if everything was in order. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Uh, oh. <laughs> Something bothering you, Chief? Well, sir, in a manner of speaking, and without wishing to split air, so... Not off. It's a bit short notice, sir. I'm just coming back from leave. I mean, we haven't had time to check everything ourselves yet. Haven't you? Strange. By the look of what's here, I should have thought you could have checked it from memory. Oh, yes. Well, everything isn't exactly kept here, sir. You know, oh, right? well, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, I know what I'll be doing. What? Cutting them six blankets in half, then cutting them twelve halves in... Belt up! <laughs> Quite, Chief. Uh, do the best you can. Carry on, Chief. Oh, aye, aye, sir. Blimey, that's tonic. I've just remembered something. What, Chief? Our new jetty. It was. <laughs> was, Chief? Yeah, was. Mr. Phillips brought the launch in in his customary manner. And the new jetty now looks like the freight work on the front of an 1870 upright piano. <laughs> My mum Min's got a fret work front. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, on her upright piano. <laughs> <laughs> Only now. <laughs> Only now it's not. Not what? Upright. <laughs> One leg's come off. <laughs> it's propped up with one of my mum Min's dundee cakes. Yeah, well, all right. That's enough. That's enough. That's yeah. enough. Enough. It's too much. Now my mum Min's got a piano with a bass higher than the treble. <laughs> Hello! Hey, listen here. I'm talking to you. I know, I, 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 I'm, I'm talking to you now. I've told you before. I don't want to know about your mum Min's piano. No, is it anyone else now? It's full of cake crumbs. Bell <laughs> Town! Now, look, that's enough. Now, look, see what you can do about scrounging them stores while well, I nips down to the jetty and see about straightening it up before old Thundercats gets here. Oh, yeah, Chief. Otherwise, we'll end up with a new Mr. Phillips, as well as a new number one. And um, as I shall shortly be making a full report... Making a full report. Not fool. 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 <laughs> oh, beg pardon, Commander Povey. I'm not really used to uh, clerical work yet. And so I gathered. By the way you handled that pencil, I'd have thought you were a stoker. <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh, really? Now, let's get on. Let's get on. Hello, Commander Povey speaking. Hello? This is the Admiral here. I want to speak to Commander Povey. Oh, how do you do, sir? Uh, this is Commander Povey. What? Oh, well, see if you can find him for me, will you? <laughs> but this is Commander Povey. Eh? Oh, never mind. You'll do. Where that chap Povey gets to is beyond me. I'm here. 
On the pier? <laughs> well, well, good luck to him, then. No oh, good grief. For the last time, sir, this is Commander Povey. Oh, you're back, are you? <laughs> you're not supposed to keep popping out for quick ones when you're on duty, you know. <laughs> Looks bad, Povey. Quite. Tight? Already? <laughs> You've only got a few minutes. Well, look here, you better sleep it off. And in the meantime, put me on to Commander Povey, will you? Oh, but, but, sir, but, but Hello? I, I, I... Hello, Povey? Oh, what the blaze is going on? Oh, I wish I knew. Look, I've been wandering around up at Admiralty here. As far as I can see, there are naval stalls on the move all over the thumping place. What? That's extraordinary. They all seem to be heading for your island draft. Look into it, will you? We're being cleaned out up here. With the utmost pleasure, Good. sir. Good. Goodbye, then. And tell that other idiot to take more water with it in future. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. No. Shall I reconnect you, sir? No, enough is enough. I'm going to the island at once to see what they're up to. But you're not due there until tomorrow, sir. All the more reason why I should go now. I say, Heather, mm -hmm. I was wondering, how do you get on with the new number one? Me? Mm. Oh, we get on very well. <laughs> very well? Very well. Oh, nice chap. Terribly. We get on... Very well, yes. <laughs> Leslie, mm? you wouldn't be a tiny bit jealous, would you? Who, me? <laughs> jealous? <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> we get on very... Uh, <laughs> do you mind changing the subject? Certainly. How are things with the jetty? Cool. I said, change the subject. Why pick on that one? <laughs> the chief's patching it up now. Be as good as new in no time. Hello, main office. Hello, Heather. Look, this is Chiefy. Is the uh, pride of the service there? He is. Hang on. It's the chief for you. Oh, uh, thanks. Um, um, Sub-Lieutenant, hang on, Chiefing. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, how's the jetty? All finished? Well, if you mean done for, sir, yes. <laughs> We've had it. Oh, well done, Chief. You've no idea how great... <coughs> had it? Uh, what, what do you mean, had it? Well, let me put it this way, sir. If this was wartime and our jetty belonged to the enemy, and you'd done to it what you have done to it, our lot would have given you a flaming medal and you'd have been a national hero. <laughs> no, it was nothing. Anyone in my position would have done the same. Oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, can't one of your relatives help at all? No, not just at the moment, sir, no. No, they're all rather busy moving stores, sir. Oh, yes, of course, they would be. Oh, number one's buzzing. Uh, do the best you can, Chief. Oh, I say... Come in! You buzzed, sir? Ah, oh, Mr. Phillips, I've been having a look round this morning and there seems to be a tremendous amount of activity going on by the jetty. Practically the entire draft seems to be either sawing, hammering or gluing. <laughs> oh, it, it must be uh, uh, Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's do-it-yourself class. Yes, uh, <laughs> I thought it might be. I take it the subject this week is how to repair your own jetty after some idiot's taken a swipe at it with a launch. <laughs> exactly, sir, and we've had it because... Oh. Uh, oh, sir... You've been peeping. <laughs> I'm afraid so, Mr. Phillips. And as a mere layman in these matters, I'd say that jetty is a write-off. I'm afraid it is, sir. Uh, given time, Pertwee could fix it. Yes, given time, I imagine Pertwee could straighten the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. And if there'd been water around it, I imagine you'd have been the one who knocked it off centre. <laughs> Well, accidents will happen. Oh, they will, won't they? <laughs> well, now, as Commander Povey is due here tomorrow, I've been having a look through the files, and I find there's a signal ordering the frigate Trout Bridge to be repainted. There is, sir? Huh? There is. Mind you, it's uh, dated 1954, but it does exist. I don't quite follow you, sir. Well, just a thought, Mr. Phillips, but I learnt very early in my career that if you can't repair damaged admiralty property, hide it. Hide it? Yes. 
Now, Troutbridge is anchored offshore at present, but if she was tied up alongside the jetty, Mr. Phillips, for repainting, of course, it might well be that other eyes might not be able to see that she's not tied up to the jetty, but to a heap of firewood. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Never mind what you see, Mr. Phillips. Being new here, I'm more concerned with what Commander Povey doesn't see. Have Troutbridge prepared at once. Aye, aye, sir. It'll be a pleasure, sir. You know... I think we're going to get on very well, sir. Very well, Mr. Phillips? <laughs> oh, very well, sir. Now, left hand down a bit. Left hand down a bit it is, sir. Now, watch the bonnet. Watch the... Aye. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, after listening to what you laughingly call navigation orders, it's no longer a surprise to me that you clouted the jetty. Oh. The only mystery is how you came to stop there. Why didn't you plough a ditch straight through the island on the other side? Well, we hadn't got enough steam up. <laughs> I, I mean... Uh... I'm coming up with the jetty now, sir. I trust you checked on the tide for clearance, Mr. Phillips? Oh, rather, sir. The tide's up, sir. Pretty odd. It doesn't look like it. Well, I've checked the tide tables, huh? And it's definitely up. <laughs> Blimey, we're a ground. <laughs> Mr. Philip Soup, congratulations, you've gone abundance. <laughs> I can't have. The table says the tide's up. Then we must assume that the sea cannot read, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge, Chief Petty Officer Pertwee speaking. Engine room here, Chief. Yep. Who declared war? <laughs> <laughs> Who declared what? I said... Who declared war? Well, no one yet, but old Thunderguts is about to. <laughs> Here. What are you eating, Jock? Cake. Cake? Hey, I found it in a train in Dundee. <laughs> Why, are you thieving hell? That's Johnson's mum means cake. Is it? Well, she's a rotten cook. <laughs> it's burnt. Then stop doing us a favour, you human dustbin, and send out the crumbs. Bridge, number one here. Starboard, look out here, sir. Pompey launch approaching with Commander Povey aboard. Povey? Gracious me, how very ill-timed. He's not supposed to be here till tomorrow. Ahoy there, Trout Bridge. This is Commander Povey. Quick, Mr. Phillips, are the guns loaded? Oh, rather, sir. Then lesson two. If you can't hide damaged Admiralty property, lose it. Now, Trout Bridge is between Commander Povey and the jetty, so he can't see it. Good. Blast that jetty out of the water, Mr. Phillips. Uh, what? But, but, sir... Don't argue. Sink it. <laughs> oh. Oh, jolly good. Uh, uh, Chief, um, fire one. Fire one it is, sir! <laughs> hey, what the blazes are you lunatics up to? I'm soaked! Yeah, you fired the wrong way, sir. The jetty's the other side. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, um, oh, that's uh, s s silly of me, uh... Um, at the jetty, Chief. Uh, far two. At the jetty, far two it is, sir. Boom, sir. We got it. Hey, what are you doing? Where did that one go? I'll court-martial the lot of you. I say, oh, Thundergus will have his launch over if he keeps jumping up and down like that. Perhaps he's, <laughs> perhaps he's trying to see over the top of Trout Bridge and spot what we're firing at. Well, even if he could jump that high, it wouldn't do him much good now, sir. The only thing between us and his shawl... Is ten tons of driftwood and a load of rusty nails and assorted sizes. <laughs> really? Now I wonder where all that came from. Lummy, how's that for a shocking memory? It's the jetty, sir. We just blew it up. Jetty? <laughs> Strange. I don't recall any jetty here, do you, Chief? Well, only the one with. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, no, sir. No. Oh, no. Now that you come to mention it, sir, I don't. No, no, not so much as a plank, sir. I... I didn't think you would. 
What are you two talking about? Of course there was a jetty here. I mean, it was the new one. I just... No! No, there wasn't, Mr. Phillips, sir. Oh, no, 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 sir. No, there wasn't. You're suffering from a slight mental aborigine, sir. <laughs> Aren't you? Am I really? Yes, Mr. Phillips, you are. Yes, but, um... At least you'd better be. Oh, he is, sir. He is. Even if I have to explain it to him for a week, he is. <laughs> no, I... I... Splendid. Now, that means it'll be Commander Povey's word against ours that the new jetty was ever built. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> so it will. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Blimey, came the dawn. <laughs> oh, I can be pretty quick at times, you know. <laughs> no, sir, we didn't. Of course, uh, there is a small matter, Mr. Murray, sir. Uh, what's that? Well, we're just a teeny weeny bit of ground, sir. Hardly our fault, is it, Chief? Isn't it, sir? Well, of course not. Naturally, we have to comply with Admiralty orders to repaint Troutbridge. And if their lordships had built the new jetty here, we shouldn't have had to come in so close in shore. Blimey, caps off! Caps off! We've got a flaming genius aboard! <laughs> so, well? So, look, so, bearing in mind a certain amount of high class engine maturity that's been flying about on this bridge, I should like to take this opportunity of saying on behalf of the entire ship's company, Welcome aboard, sir. Welcome. <laughs> here, here. Thank you. I think we should all get on very well. Oh, oh yes, yes, sir. Very, very well. That was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, the Admiral was Tanya Evans, and a rating was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips, and Stephen Murray. Well, it's just as well that birthdays come but once a year, or we should all be up to our ears in hand-knitted socks and gaudy ties. Luckily, a forgotten uncle usually sends us a few bobs so we can go out to celebrate and forget things. Things like those terrible socks and horrible ties. Hearts of oak are our men. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. No singing in the bar. My friend is not singing. He was just making a flaming horrible noise. <laughs> Would you, Ginger? Hearts of oak are a man. I must go down to the sea again. What, you just been? What are you... <laughs> with all my river, with all... Ole! <laughs> See what I mean? Here, it's my birthday, and I've, I've got a new camera. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Christmas, dear Santa. Happy Easter, cuckoo. <laughs> Lovely. All right, you two jolly jacks. Here you go, up it. Up it? I won't up it. It's my birthday, and I refuse to up it. I've got a new camera. Very yeah. likely. Yeah. Happy birthday, and here you go. Yeah. Any brave hearts of all? Hey, God, I... I... Certainly and not. And take Elvis with you. Certainly <laughs> Seeing as we go, I let the world go. Uh, take your big civilian's hands off me. Your big civilian's hands. Yeah, we're not going... Here, mind my flash attachment, see? Don't get the hand Oi, Johnson. What? Where did everybody go? They didn't. We did. <laughs> oh, that's a pity. I will want to sing for him. Oh, Arts of all kinds. Oh, oh shut up. I want to take your picture. Stand still. I am standing still. (laughs) 
you're not standing still. Oh, then I can't. <laughs> I see. Well, if that's your attitude, I shall just have to go and take someone else's photo instead. Oh, go on. Take mine. No. Oh, go on. There's no one else about. I shall find somebody. <laughs> Bet you won't. Bet I shall. Done. Now let's get home. I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> No, it's my birthday and I'm not going home until I've taken somebody's picture. Smile, please, when you're smiling, when you're smiling. <laughs> morning, Helen. Oh. Good morning, Leslie. You're late. Mm, that's what I feel like. The late Leslie. <laughs> oh. Well, I admit you're never exactly bright, but this is ridiculous. Are you feeling all right? No, I'm, I'm tired out. Oh, you didn't go out last night, did you? No, I didn't. But somebody did. <laughs> Who? I don't know, but he woke me up every half hour. Oh, what on earth for? Said he wanted to take my photograph. <laughs> Yes, when I got up this morning, I was up to my knees in dud flashbulbs. <laughs> How extraordinary. Uh, I got him in the end. What did you do? I sat up in bed, said cheese, and ordered six postcard enlargements. <laughs> oh, really? What's wrong with that? At ninepence each, they're jolly reasonable. I thought I might turn them into calendars and send them to my friends. Well, you can count me out. Oh. There's one thing I can do without is looking at a picture of you in your nightshirt, bleary-eyed at three o'clock in the morning for a solid year. <laughs> well, if you're bleary-eyed at three o'clock in the morning, why not look at it some other time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Heather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How, um... <laughs> How did you know I wore a nightshirt? I didn't actually know. It was just a stone-cold bonker cert. Oh, I thought I must have been sleepwalking past your quarters. No. And don't bother to start tonight. At what time? <laughs> I mean, um, of course not. Good morning. Oh, blimey, it's number one. Uh, oh, um, good morning, sir. I thought you were in your nightshirt. Uh, I mean, I, 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 um, in your office, sir. No, I overslept, I'm afraid. Uh, overslept, sir? Yes, a shocking storm last night, wasn't there? Lightning kept waking me up. <laughs> well, I didn't know anything about it. Oh, it's terrible. Flash, 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 it never stopped. Hardly got a wink until about four o'clock. I shan't forget it in a hurry. Yeah, you probably have six enlargements to remind you. <laughs> Hello, main office. This is Commander Povey. Lieutenant Murray there. Oh, one moment, sir. It's Commander Povey, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, morning, Thunderguts. What? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, Lieutenant Murray speaking, sir. Can I help you? I very much doubt it, but the choice is not mine. I have a chap here from Naval Information. I gather your draft has been selected to boost naval recruiting in some way. <laughs> I say, what a clangor. For once, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, I'll see you later and let you know the details. How kind. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, sir, what have I done this time? Uh, nothing, as far as I know. Why? I heard you say something about a clangor. <laughs> yes, well, I'll admit that you seem to have a corner in clangors, Mr. Phillips. But there are still a few left for other people to drop, apparently. I must let Chief Petty Officer Pertwee know that we're to be part of a recruiting drive. Well, it's not much point, is it, sir? Why not? Well, he's already joined. <laughs> Idiot. If anybody wants me, Heather, I'll be in the stores. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm not well. I'm definitely not well. Hard luck, Johnson. Because thanks to you, neither is anyone else for flaming miles. <laughs> what do you mean, Chief? When Abel Seaman thought so as a night out, we all have one, regardless. 
Well, it was me birthday. With that blooming camera and flash gun, I thought it was bonfire night. <laughs> you, how did you know about my camera? You told me. He went. About half past two this morning. <laughs> flash ball. <laughs> well, what were you doing up at that time of night? I didn't have no choice, sonny. I was being serenaded by the Frankie Vaughan of Wigan. <laughs> Ginger, eh? If you mean the red-headed lunatic who bellowed in my left lug hole that our men have hearts of hope, yes. <laughs> I've got a feeling someone spoke a bit sharpish to me last night as well. You're right, Johnson. I did. <laughs> you kept up and on a little idea that you had. Oh, dear. Yeah. You wanted Chief Petty Officer Pertwee to get out of his nice warm bunk, strip off and lay on a rug so you could take his picture. <laughs> Beg pardon, I'm sure. Ginger ought to stop me. Ginger was the little birdie I was supposed to watch. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> So he was, yeah. You know what he did? No. He kept racing round the room, flapping his arms and shouting, Tweet, tweet. <laughs> As I told you last night, Johnson, it's not your hearts that are made of oak. It's your heads! <laughs> Mine feels if it's made of gunpowder this morning. Good. Have a cigarette. Oh, ta. And blow it up. <laughs> I reckon that's about the only thing that'll clear it. Oh, no, it isn't, Johnson. I've got a much better cure. What? Work. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Cool. Going out for a nice little sea trip about midnight tonight. Cool, where? In mid-channel, my son. See, I'm expecting a delivery of, uh, of some wine off a French fishing ship. The Om of Orleans. Oh, he might have known it's smuggling. No, 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 certainly not. This happens to be a uh, very uh, temperamentalical wine. Yeah. And going through the customs uh, delays its delivery, see? So I've arranged with a French friend of mine, Pierre, to sort of bypass them in order to get it here nice and fresh. Mm. <laughs> that's going to... That's going to sound jolly good echoing round the old Bailey, that is. Johnson. <laughs> Johnson, please. Ah, good morning, Chief. Uh, not guilty, I want legal aid, sir. I beg your pardon? I was with him at the time, sir. When was that, exactly? Uh, well, well, he means uh, whenever it was that whatever it was happened to whoever it was. Wherever it was. <laughs> I see. Well, um, whenever it is whoever it was complains about whatever it was, I'll remember you two are in the clear. Yeah, very much obliged. <laughs> You're looking a bit tatty this morning, Johnson. I suppose the lightning kept you awake as well. <laughs> Lightning, sir? Yes, flash, flash, flash. I've never known anything like it. You see it, Chief? I, oh, oh, yes. Yeah, vividly, sir. Yeah, it's vividly. I was, I was uh, up watching the birdies at the time. <laughs> really? No idea you were an ornithologist? <laughs> Only what, sir? <laughs> ornithologist. No. Oh, well, well, sir, it's, it's not a thing I like to mention a mixed company, of course. <laughs> yeah, very commendable. Now, um, we're about to receive a visit from a gentleman from CNI. We are. I get a way to boost recruiting in some way. We are. <laughs> Oh, they must be start raving bolters. <laughs> yeah, pretty well my own reaction exactly, but there it is. I want trout bridge prepared and the launch standing by in case they need either. Oh, but the launch won't be here, sir. Not here? No, sir. You see, at midnight, I've got to pick up some smuggles from the... <laughs> <Don't touch! laughs> Look, what's this? What's what? Oh, 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 uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing, sir. No, nothing at all, no. No, nothing at all. No, it was his birthday yesterday, sir. It's his birthday. He's, he, he's a bit mud all this morning. Aren't you nut on it? <laughs> You're rotten, you are. Birthday? Johnson, you weren't by any chance given a camera, were you? Oh, yes, sir, it was a box. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 he wasn't, sir. No, he wasn't given anything, sir, no. Why? <laughs> oh, nothing. 
just thinking about those flashes last night. I must have been dreaming, of course, but I could have sworn somebody asked me how many enlargements I wanted. <laughs> yeah, you ordered six, sir. Cool cup! <laughs> Don't you cool cup, you know nothing, flash happy pie eyed gaff blower. Well, it was me birthday. All right, all right, it was your birthday. I had one last year and all. all right, that's enough. That's enough, I'll shut up. Fell on the same day, too, funnily enough. <laughs> I've told you before. We don't want to know about it. We don't want to know about your birthday. Well, my mum, Min, did. Want to know about my birthday? <laughs> she wanted to know about my birthday, all right, she did. Hi, mum, Min. She sent me a card. Well, what did it say, then? Postage due sixpence. No. <laughs> I told you before, Faxo. Look, don't tell about your birthday. Or I'll do you a disaster. Chief, will you forgive me if I don't wait for the end of this game of happy families? <laughs> oh, yeah, quite so. I must get back to my office and see if there's any further news of our guests. Aye, aye, say yes. And uh, try to remember that wherever it is, our shipping was going to pick up whatever it was from whoever it was. I want Trout Bridge and the launch here. Understood? Catastrophically, sir, yes. <laughs> Splendid. Many happy returns, Johnson. Same to you, sir. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? Hey? I enjoyed it, yes. Isn't it <laughs> But I didn't enjoy it. Every time Chief Billy Officer Pertwee sorts himself out a bit of pay as a fiddle, some fat neat mucks it up. <laughs> If you can't have the launch tonight, I'll be able to have a kip after all. <laughs> oh, no, you won't, giggle niggle. You've forgotten something waterproof. What? The dingy. You can row me out. What, the middle of the channel? It'll take hours. Oh, no, it won't. Why? Because you're going to row fast. What? <laughs> yeah. What's more, I'll be there to see you do it. Hello, main office. What? Oh, thank you very much. Goodbye. That was Commander Purvis' secretary. Oh, really? Oh, was a nice girl. Got interesting legs. Yes, legs. Uh, the, the legs on her desk, I mean. <laughs> Jacobean, probably. And 15 denier, no doubt. Oh, yeah, sheer heaven. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the news? Well, Commander Pope is on his way over with his CNI chap and the Admiral. Oh, blimey. Number one's playing silly buzzers again. <laughs> well, don't forget to tell him the Admiral's coming over. Oh, right, right. I'll see you later, Heather. Come in. Hello, main office. Hello, Heather. This is Chiefy. I don't want any. No, 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 no. Look. Look, have the Pompey lot turned up yet? Not yet, but the Admiral's coming with them. The Admiral? Oh, lovely. That's about all I needed. What are you up to? My ears, and I may have to duck. <laughs> Here, let us know if they're going to use the launch as soon as you can. There's a love. Launch? You're not starting those day trips around the island for five bob again, are you? <laughs> no, not likely. All right, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Ta. Bye. Bye. After you, Admiral. Oh, move out of the way, Pompey. There's a howling draft in this corridor. Oh, sorry, sir. Go in, by all means. Going up me jeans? <laughs> what are you waffling about? I'm an Admiral, not a confounded teddy boy. Uh, welcome aboard, sir. I had no idea you were here. <coughs> Who are you? Uh, this is the new number one, sir, Lieutenant Murray. In a hurry? Oh, well, off you go, then. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Number one, this is Lieutenant Commander Bates from CNI. Oh, uh, how do you do? I'm most pretty well, thanks. <laughs> Let them know what you want, will you, Commander? And I'll have a word with the Admiral. Well, chaps, it really is most pretty good of you to, to help us out like this. Uh, not at all. No, we didn't have pretty much choice. <laughs> I thought I'd take a cine film here, a sort of a uh, typical day in the Royal Navy type of thing. Oh, bully. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, will you kindly stop being so boisterous? It's like living with a berserk terrier. Uh, woof, woof, sir. <laughs> I mean, um, aye, aye, sir. I thought I, uh, we'd start with a shot of the island at dawn, seen from the sea. Uh, would it be terribly inconvenient to turn your launch out tonight? I can think of nothing that will please the chief more than getting up in the middle of the night to take you out in a launch. Oh, uh, good show. Absolutely fasters. 
And may I say, I hope he keeps absolutely finers for you. <laughs> oh, but I want you and number one to come along as well, naturally. Oh, that's terribly kind of you. <laughs> Me? Get up in the middle of the night? Mr. Phillips and I will be delighted. We'll all meet at the jetty about midnight, and then we can have an hour or two sleep on board, anchored off the island. Oh, ripping. I might even get a few shots of your sleep, Warren. Oh, don't bother. We've got six enlargements coming anyway. <laughs> I'll see the chief and make the arrangements at once. Come on, Johnson, hurry up and get in the dingy. <laughs> You're rotten, you are. R-O double tot E N rotten. I don't want to go rowing out there on me own. It's dark. All right, all right, that'll do. Get in that dingy and start rowing, you doddery dumpling. <laughs> Look, someone's got to meet Pierre and I've got to take the others in the launch. Why well, you can't get your wine from a pub like anybody else beats me. <laughs> Because you need the pub gets its wine from me. <laughs> now get rowing. Ginger, tweet, tweet. That'll do, Birdie. Shove that your buckle off. Aye, 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 Chief. Pierre. 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 Oh, catch him. Oh, catch him. You know where Pierre is, don't you, Ginger? No. Eight miles off Cali. <laughs> you won't be anywhere near here for hours yet, but the time he does get here, that nip will be too hoarse to call out. Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit it is, sir. OK, this'll do. Shove in neutral and switch off. Shove in you. Do what, sir? Uh, switch off. We don't want to waste petrol, Chief. Look, this may come as a great shock to you, sir, but we... We don't run on petrol, sir. <laughs> we had oil burning. Really? I say we learn something new every day, don't we? <laughs> we do indeed, Mr. Phillips. I imagine it must have come as a shattering blow for you to find that we're not propelled by paddle wheels. Oh, oh no, sir. I'd have spotted those great things going round and round. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Chaps, this spot will be absolutely ideal. Uh, oh, I say, uh, mind you, but for a couple of left hand down a bit, we'd have been here about three hours ago. Uh, never mind. I'll be able to get the most wickedly good shots of the island when the dawn breaks. Uh, permission to drop anchor, sir? Why, is it too heavy for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, oh. Yes, uh, yes, drop away. Mm. Thank you very much, sir. Dawn shouldn't be long now. <laughs> it's a quiet night, sir. Very still, Mr. Phillips. Seas like a mill pond. <laughs> Not a ripple. Was that? What was what, sir? Oh, I didn't hear anything. I hope. Well, I did. Yeah. There. There it is again. Oh, well, well um, it, it's oh, oh, I, oh. Well, chief. Oh, uh, it, it's owls. <laughs> That's what it is, sir. It's a dirty great barn owl. <laughs> barn owl? We're at sea, man. Well, it's hardly my fault if it's lost, sir. <laughs> oh, belt up, you barn owl! <laughs> what the place is this going on? Going on, yes. Yes. Oh, what? Oh, uh, so what's going on? It's all in mythology, sir. That's what it is. Yes, it's high, high class, all in mythology. Only what? Mythology. 
<laughs> no, never mind, but, but be a bit quieter about it. The, the Admiral and I are trying to get a bit of sleep. Oh, I said... Yeah! <laughs> Yerry! Chief! Sir? Unless I'm very much mistaken, that's a curiously fat barn owl out there. <laughs> yes, sir. Very fat. <laughs> yeah! Shoot! Shoot, barn owl! Flatter off! <laughs> Blimey, at last. Bon early jour, Pierre. He's the able seaman Johnson. Ju arrived to collect a the wallop. You stupid bungling off with it, great feathered friend. Good morning, Johnson. Or should I say, twit to woo? Blimey, chief. Number one, what are you doing on the French fishing boat? Oh, you would have company if old Thunderguts finds out. If old Thunderguts finds out what? I'm <laughs> double with it, sir. Well, number one, what's going on? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Oh, shut up and come aboard. Yes, Chief. Explain to Commander Poby what's going on. Yes, no. yeah, certainly, sir, certainly. Just give me about half an hour to drive Johnson off, sir. Nasty case of exposure, sir. There's frostbite, starvation. No, we'll scrub that, sir. No, but, but frostbite, sir, ain't what's more water on the bonds. Now, Chief, I want an explanation now. Now? Now. Ow. <laughs> now, yes, well, what's Johnson doing out here, sir? Now, uh, let's see, sir. I found it, yes. It's his hobby. It's his hobby, sir. Yes. Hobby, Chief? Uh, yes, sir. Photography for sir. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a sad tale, sir. It's a very sad tale, and he's a good lad. A good lad, sir. And it's sad. He's a good lad, and it's... When we come out of here... <laughs> when we come out of here to take pictures and left him behind, it broke his heart, sir. And so here he was, all on his own, here he goes out, all on his own, all on his own out there. He hopped into the dingy with his new camera, what he only had yesterday. And his dear old mum, Min, gave it to him special. Saved years, Chase. Ain't she, Johnson? Saved years, your mum, Min, has. It was me birthday. <laughs> all right, all right. It, it, it's most irregular, but, well, we must encourage keenness. Oh, yes, sir, we must, mustn't we? Sir? Yes, I, um, I tell you what, Johnson. When we get back, you can take my photograph. Oh, thanks all the same, sir. But I already have. <laughs> what? Yeah, you were in your little nightshirt, and Ginger was a birdie, and you ordered a lot of... up! <laughs> told me you two got her out a bit last night, didn't you? I say, chap, stand by. Dawn's coming up. Yes, it often does about this time, you know. <laughs> I should get some good shots from... Oh, dear. Now, now what? Don't tell me you've forgotten to put a film in your camera. Oh, no. It's loaded, all right, but... Uh, but I don't seem to have my camera with me. I'm most blackless, are I? <laughs> good grief. Where do they find them? Stone me. Up all night for nothing. Not completely, Chief. <laughs> I presume Johnson wouldn't have been out here to pick up some smuggled wine by any chance? Hey, wine? Wine? No, 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 wine? No, no, wine? No, we don't touch it. Good, that's all right then. Funny thing, you know we passed a fishing boat about a couple of hours back? Fishing boat? Yes, French job, the Om of Orleans. Oh. Rough crowd. Yes. As we passed by, they chucked a couple of crates on our stern. Wine crates, Chief. Don't touch them, sir. They're bespoke. Don't you touch them. I'm afraid I already have, and they're full. Oh. So, as I'm reasonably certain they'll remain unclaimed, I intend to crack a bottle or two when we get back. Uh, no, they'll be flat. I mean, they'll be fizzy. Oh. <laughs> Who cares? The pub's run out altogether. Oh, no, you don't have to tell me. I mean, no, no. I, <laughs> look, don't touch him, sir. It's illegal. The fines. The fines. Uh, they'll be astronomical. Astronomical. Well, then, I'm sure you'll meet them for me. Head for the island, Chief. Head for the island. <laughs> Thank you. 
That was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Able Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, the Admiral was Taniel Evans, and Lieutenant Commander Bates was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray, and John Pertwee. Well, we all have our own forms of transport troubles, whether it's having to wait for the next bus that's right behind and never is, or being the one sardine too many in the tube, or trying to hail taxi drivers that just don't want to know. Even if you're an admiral and you have your own barge, <laughs> you can still come unstuck. This way, Commander Povey. The admiral will see you in a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, you've, uh, you've no idea what he wishes to see me about, have you? No, sir, not exactly. Mm. Well, I think I can guess. The Navy never overlooks a good officer, you know. Captain Povey. Sounds well, doesn't it? <laughs> Captain Povey. Lovely, sir, but... Um... Yeah, of course, I, I must admit I've only been expecting it for some time, but nevertheless, it's very nice to have one's efforts recognised, officially. <laughs> Captain Povey. <laughs> yes, I knew the Admiral wouldn't forget me. Boy, where's that blithering idiot Povey got to? <laughs> Ten o'clock, I said. Can't he be anywhere on time? Povey, you old fool, where are you? I think the Admiral will see you now, Commander Povey. <laughs> but, 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 but I was sure oh, that... Oh, fine, Povey, somebody, bungling busybody, must be around somewhere. I'm here, Admiral. What? Well, don't just stand there, man. Go and look for that idiot Povey. But I am that idiot Povey. I, I, I mean, I am Commander Povey. Oh, it's you, Povey. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, come in. You're late. I've got something to tell you. Oh. Oh, I, uh, I suppose it wouldn't be anything to do with promotion, would it, sir? Promotion? What do I want with promotion? I'm a flaming admiral now. <laughs> well, talk sense, man. But I meant that... Oh, uh... do shut up, Povey, and let a chap get a word in. It's about me barge. I've been having a refit at Falmouth. About time, too. Last time I went in the thing, I took the salute in 18 inches of water. <laughs> Best trousers shrank up like elastic. Oh, good grief. Yeah, they were very brief. <laughs> and if that water had risen any higher, I might have faced a crisis. <laughs> well, get on with it then. Get on with what, sir? Oh, didn't I tell you? Oh, no, of course not. Look, I want me barge collected and brought round to Portsmouth. Movement control will sort out something to pick it up with. I'll attend to it at once, sir. Bracewell here, movement control. This is Commander Furby, Portsmouth. I've just received instructions to collect the Admiral's barge from Falmouth. Oh, <laughs> oh bags are fine. You'll be needing a destroyer then. The system is in a shocking panic here. <laughs> we lost a cruiser last week. <laughs> no idea where she was. Oh, good grief. I trust you located her in the end. Oh, rather. Just went through all the old files, you know. Didn't help a bit. <laughs> then how did you find this cruiser, may I ask? Simple, old boy. Saw her tied up outside my window. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> No, where were we? Oh, yes, you want a destroyer. If you can find one. Sorry, old sport, nothing available. Try again in a week or two. Neither of you recall. No, 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 wait. Don't you understand? The Admiral wants his barge. Oh, well, we shall just have to put our little selves out a bit then, shan't we? <laughs> Hang on, now, where's my list? My list. <laughs> ah, here we are, the very article. <laughs> 
Hello, Pervy. Pervy, I got a frigate for you. Ah, good. Yes, HMS Trout Bridge. Trout <laughs> Bridge? Oh, no, please. You must have got something else, anything. Sorry, old sport. Trout Bridge is with that island draft. Oh, don't bother to tell me. I know only too well where Trout Bridge is. Thank you very much. Sure, yeah, good show. Good show. I say, moving the Admiral's barge, eh? You've got your feet well under the table, haven't you, Pervy? All right. <laughs> Shouldn't be surprised if you get promotion. Now that you've forced me to use Trout Bridge, I shall be astonished if I don't end up an ordinary seaman. <laughs> oh, hard cheese. Never mind. <laughs> Worst things happen at sea. What? Totally, boy. <laughs> Good morning, Edda. I don't want any. No, you can't, and there's none left. Good morning. <laughs> I don't know. How could anyone be like that and look so lovely, so radiant, and so young? Like the first dew on a rose in early winter, you look. <laughs> oh, well, all right, all right. What do you want, Valentino? Me? Chief bit officer, perfectly want anything. <laughs> Edda, how could you? I'm hurt. That's what I am. I'm hurt. A few gems of praise spoken spotted me to moment in his sleep. I'm suspected. Well, I, I really am terribly sorry. You are? Well, of course. Good. Then get me Uncle Montague's garage on the phone quick. I'm in the muck. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, really in it. There's a certain three-ton truck full of ex-naval blankets smack bang outside. Ex-naval? Yeah. Ex naval, I've come to a little arrangement with the drapers down in the village. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Wish I could. <laughs> that truck is stuck on the parade ground, and it's smack bang outside number one's window. Oh, aren't you the lucky one? <laughs> well, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? The nit driving it has lost the floggle toggle. <laughs> That's what he's done. He's lost the floggle toggle, and it won't budge. He just chucked up as far as number one's window, coughed in moderate, and packed up. Ah, good morning, Heather. Good morning, Chief. Have you seen number one? No, sir, and I don't want to for a bit. Why? Oh, nothing. I just thought I ought to tell him there's a three-ton truck stuck on the parade ground outside his window. <laughs> <laughs> there's a what, sir? And didn't you notice it when you came in? It's full of blankets. Oh, aren't you the observant one, sir? It's got to be one of them days. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. <laughs> Ah, Chief, just the chap I wanted to see. Really, sir? I oh, thought you might. You'd better pop over to the stores at once. Stores? Yes, a consignment of blankets has just arrived. Oh, back. <laughs> back? Back. To be exact, a three-tonner full. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, they'll come in handy, sir. <laughs> That's odd. What is, apart from you, Mr. Phillips? Well, <laughs> very funny, sir. <laughs> well, sir, there's another three-ton truck full of blankets stuck on the parade ground. Not anymore, Mr. Phillips. How did he get that truck going? That's what I want to know. How did he get it going? Simple, Chief. I gave the driver his floggle toggle back. <laughs> I, um... borrowed it when I saw it outside the back of the stores earlier this morning. Oh, very kind of you, sir. I'll see you later. You probably will, Chief. You probably will. I was afraid I would. I was afraid I would. <laughs> Hello, main office. This is Commander Povey. Is Lieutenant Murray there? Oh, one moment, sir. It's Commander Povey for you, sir. And the best of British luck, sir. <laughs> I knew the day had started too well. Uh, good morning, Commander Povey. Number one, the Admiral wants his barge back. Back? Oh, I'll speak to uh, CPO Pertwee at once, Edda, sir. Will you kindly let me finish? We're to pick it up from Falmouth with Trout Bridge. I gather there is no other ship available. How did you get? <laughs> I'll be over later. Yes, I'll have Trout Bridge made ready, sir. Thank you. And this time, will you please, please try not to ram, sink, or scuttle everything within sight? <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Well, a simple mistake, sir. It could have happened to anyone. 
What was, Mr. Phillips? Well, whatever it is I've done to make old Thunderguts ring up at this hour. <laughs> uh, for once, Commander Povey seems to be more concerned over what you're liable to do, Mr. Phillips, rather than what you've already done. Oh, then we must be going to sea. <laughs> well, we're to go to Falmouth and pick up the Admiral's barge after her refit. Refit? Now, when did I hit that? <laughs> well, you didn't. However, getting that barge slung aboard Trout Bridge is going to be pretty tricky. So I shall look to you for accurate navigation, split-second calculations, and all other possible assistance. You will, sir. I say, you're going to be in the muck, aren't you? <laughs> Johnson? Johnson? Who is it? It's Chief for the Officer Pert for you, woolen headed adult brain steaming great clown. <laughs> come in, Chief. Come in. Oh, can I come in, you nit? You've stacked all them flaming blankets the other side of the door. <laughs> it won't budge. Oh, so will you. Hang on a minute. There we are. Good morning, Chief. Johnson. Johnson, that's not what I meant. What? I meant I wanted you to shift those blankets so that I could get in. I didn't want you to jump through the window so we could have a chat. <laughs> That's so. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, give me a hump up through the window and I'll shift them then. Give you a hump up? <laughs> You're choking, of course, Pudge figure. <laughs> Look, if I want to do myself a disaster like that, I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll look forward to it. Yeah, that'll do. Have we got a ladder anywhere? Yeah. Well, go and get it. I can't. Why? It's in the stores. <laughs> You're a big help, you are. Look, if I don't get them blankets on the move again, a certain chief petty officer's going to get lynched by a certain local draper. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Johnson. Thank you very much for that deep felt expression of your concern. Yeah. And as soon as I'm in the clear, I'll fill you in up to your pudgy ankles. <laughs> Here, Chief, I'll tell you what. what. I could do a running charge at the door with me shoulder and bust it in. It's going to be like watching young porpoises at play, but go on. <laughs> right out. Chief, stand me. Stand me. Where'd you come from? Out of the back of the stores. <laughs> I went right through. What? You went right? You mean you've been straight through the rear wall? No, the back door was open. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Isn't it marvellous? It's marvellous. That's what it is. Marvellous. Look, look at the mess. Look at the mess, you know-nothing rogue elephant, you. <laughs> we didn't half go, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon it'll take about three days to clear that lot up. <laughs> I accept your estimate, Johnson, so get on with it. Oh, you're rotten, you are. Yeah, very likely. Yeah. When people ask me, that's what I tell them, you know. He's rotten, I say. He's rotten, that's what he is. Rotten. That's enough. The capital rot, rotten. Are you done? Yeah. Good. Done rotten. Finished? Finished. Good, because this is where I start. You know what you are? No, what am I? You're a dead, dangerous, droopy, dunder-headed, great dumpling. Am I really, Chief? Yes, sir, you are. Oh! <laughs> oh, God, it's you, sir. <laughs> How the bloody... I mean, where did you spring from? I mean, uh, good morning. Uh, to put it mildly, Chief, the door was open. Oh. And what's been through here? Runaway tank? <laughs> well, you could put it that way, sir, yes. Uh, it was Johnson, sir. He, he, sort, of, he sort of tripped. Gracious, <laughs> gracious me. Well, you better get your skates on, as we've got to pick up the Admiral's barge from Falmouth with Troutbridge. We have, sir. <laughs> I uh, gather there's no other ship... Available? Uh, quite, Chief. Well, uh, thanks all the same, sir, if you don't mind. I'll, I think I'll sit this one out, if you don't mind. I've got a lot of work to do in this. Well, it'll have to wait, Chief. 
You're coming with us. Oh, we can't, sir. Can't? Why ever not? Well, if he don't get them blankets on to move the draper down the village, you'll end Oh, stop! <laughs> but you said so. Don't you remember, Chief? You said if you don't oh, get... Oh, stop! <laughs> you have a mouth. You have a blood. Oh, come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry about that, sir. I'm very sorry you uh, spit like that, sir. <laughs> It's a purely a misunderstanding, of course. I see. Well, uh, see you aboard Troutbridge shortly, then. Uh, yeah, if you insist. Uh, I'm rather afraid I do. Yes, well, we'll be there with the lacrimal Yeah, just soon we, just soon as we got them blankets on the lawn. Uh, Johnson! <laughs> Johnson! <laughs> Johnson! <laughs> I've told you before, shut up. <laughs> you stop talking unless you're talking to. Leave it in, shut up when you're speaking. <laughs> aye, aye, Chief. Right, now that you've dealt with Yak Box, Chief, there's no reason for any further delay, is there? <laughs> See you aboard, then. You and Yak Box. <laughs> <laughs> Life's never what you might call smooth for you, is it, Chief? Not exactly giggle niggle, no. <laughs> if you don't go to Falmouth, you'll get court martialed. And if you do go, you'll get lynched by that draper when you get back. Well, natty little problem, innit? <laughs> Stop savouring it, Porky. Or all your natty little problems will end right now. Oh, pardon, I'm sure. What are you going to do, then? Well, I'm going to go aboard, of course. Yeah. After I've rung up a certain draper and told him the three tonners outside, and for once the stores are open. Cool. You're just going to let him help himself? I am. And if he drives off with so much as one more blanket than he's paid for... I'm the one that's going to do the lynching. Who did that? You did, sir. <laughs> uh, you did it, sir. You lent on the switch. Oh, manners. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, sorry. Ah, lovely spot, Falmouth. So quiet. A real bit of old England. Mr. Phillips, will you stop talking like a guide on Fred Higgins' luxury coach tours and get the Admiral's barge slung aboard? Oh, certainly, sir. Nearly ready to hoist away now, sir. Good. But before you do, Mr. Phillips, I implore you, just for once, to think what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I'll soon have her up, Sir Daisy, sir. I don't doubt it, but try and keep it all in one piece. I don't want to hand the Admiral a mammoth do-it-yourself barge kit. <laughs> oh, I think you can leave it quite safely to us, Commander Purvin. Number one, I appreciate that you are new here. But even after three weeks, to express such blind confidence in this energetic dead loss <laughs> is perfectly ludicrous. Ruddy ludicrous! <laughs> Arch by four, sir, ready for hoisting. A good show. Hoist away. Up she comes. There we are. Clean as a whistle. You've actually done it. I, I don't know what to say. Oh, just don't say anything, sir. Just let it drop. Let it drop! <laughs> <laughs> One do-it-yourself barge kit the ball. <laughs> you heavy-handed idiot. Look at the paintwork. What's the Admiral going to say? I wonder. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean, sir. Yeah, it's pretty rough, considering uh, she's just had a refit. I knew something like this would happen. Give me any other ship, I said. Anything but Trout Bridge. Well, you should have had a word with the chief. He'd have found you something in no time. At a price, of course. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, let's get underway. Oh, do we have to, sir? I mean, it's such a lovely spot. I mean, it's so, so quiet. A real bit of old England. Mr. Phillips. What? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, start her up, chief. Uh, well, I mean, uh, give her a crank. Uh, well, well, shove off or something. Shove off or something it is, sir. <laughs> Uh, you were leaning on it again, sir. What? Who was? Uh, you was. Oh, so I were. 
Uh, how silly of me. Mr. Phillips, the cranes! Cranes? Yes, sir, the cranes. Mind the cranes, sir. We're right on the cranes. Everybody down! <laughs> Say something, sir. Oh, um, uh, good morning, Mr. Crane Driver. Lovely day. <laughs> you dirty lot of half Not of it! Thank you, Pertwee. Well said. <laughs> Not at all, sir. Any time. Left hand down a bit. Left hand down a bit, it is, sir. How are those ratings getting on with the repainting? Oh, that barge will never exactly be a Rembrandt, number one, but it'll do. For once, I don't care what happens or what you do, as long as I can hand that wretched thing over without losing my commission. Oh, well, if he, uh, if he doesn't care what we do, um, I wonder if I could do... Uh... No, Chief, you may not. <laughs> Whatever it is. Uh, but golden opportunities don't grow on trees, sir. And if I could just pop in to see a relative of mine on the way back, <laughs> oh, I could do a lovely deal with him. No, Chief, we are remaining on course. Ah, and it's funny you should mention that, sir. Mention what? Uh, being on course, sir. <laughs> These charts must be terribly out of date. Out of Date. Yes, sir, the shoreline has changed altogether since these were drawn. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, yes, sir. We should have been in the open sea ages ago. And there's absolutely no mention of that sort of landing stage thing up there at all. Landing stage thing, sir? Yes. Uh, oh, well done, sir. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, that's the King Harry Car Ferry, sir. We're halfway up the River Fowl. <laughs> I say, are we really? Now, how did they do that? They didn't, sir. You did. We're headed in the wrong way. I knew it. I knew he'd do it. Uh, if you, uh, excuse me, saying so, sir, but have you made any plans for civilian life, Mr. Phillips? <laughs> I mean, if not, a relative of mine in Alaska is looking for a very nice... Now, don't be ridiculous, Pertwee. I mean, what's all the fuss about? All you've got to do is turn round and go back. <laughs> sir? Hmm? How? Well, this bag's of room, Pertwee. I, there must be a good six inches either side. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, lummy. It is a bit on the tight side, I suppose. Mr. Phillips, this really is too bad. We shall have to radio over a tug. What's that? I was nowhere near the beastie switch. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it wasn't you that time, sir. It came from behind us. Bridge, number one here. Starboard, look out here, sir. There's a rather familiar, tatty old tug starter. Familiar, tatty old tug? Tug? It's Nunky! That's what it is, sir. It's Nunky! Yeah. All right, I'll deal with it. <laughs> well, Chief? Uh, well, sir. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> sir. Fancy yes. that. Yes. It's Uncle Ebenezer, sir. Fancy. <laughs> well, well. Well, 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 well. I wonder what he's doing in this part of the world. Same as always, I suppose, following us around like a blooming vulture, hoping we'll clout something so that he can collect the salvage. <laughs> well, so with due respect, your navigation don't half bump up his business. Well, that's as may be, but just for once, I'd love to run amuck without hearing him going, er, 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 five seconds afterwards. Oh, do stop arguing. Tell this tug to turn us about. Uh, oh, I said, with pleasure, sir. Nunky! You've clicked! All right, all right, watch your steam, you silly old buzzard. Or you'll go off the boil. Mm. Oh, stone me, where did he learn that one? Pertwee, please, do you think we could get on? The Admiral is waiting for his barge. Oh, oh yes, yes, so he is, sir. Yes, won't be long now, sir. They're, they're making the oars of fast. Ah, oh, it's a lovely spot. Mm -hmm. So quiet. Real bit of old England. Oh, shut up. Uh, all set, sir. Uh, uh, 
Give it all you've got and keep get us round. <laughs> Yankees taking the strain, sir. Well, I hope he doesn't beat us. Why, did you want to? Yankees on the way, sir. We're off. That's odd. We don't seem to be moving. Oh, so we don't, do we? <laughs> what on earth? Oh, blimey. Yankee! Yankee, you salt cake smokestack. You're trying the car ferry, not us. <laughs> Due to circumstances oh, beyond... Oh, shut the... up, Povey, and let me get aboard me barge. With all due respect, sir, I, I wouldn't advise it to... Oh, get out of the Admiral's way, Chief. No, but, sir, I've just noticed... I some... say, look, surely it's not supposed Mr. to... Mr. Um... Phillips, kindly stand aside. Oh, come on, Povey. <laughs> look, you may as well come back with me. You were nattering about promotion, weren't you? Well, we'll chat about that on the way back. Promotion? Oh, oh certainly, sir. <laughs> After you, sir. Uh, allow me, sir. This way. Huh? Well, give us a hand, then. Permission to come aboard, sir? Certainly not. Come aboard and shut up. <laughs> Cast off, Chief. Cast off, sir. Pull ahead. Uh, no, wait, wait, quick. Get me out of this confounded thing. I'm drowning. What the blazes? Oh, lovely, it's leaking. All the shore that's coming to shore. Move it. Get me off this thing, you hear? Oh, certainly, sir. Up. Oh, I'm drenched. Look at me trousers. They'll shrink. I know they will. They'll shrink. I, I don't understand it. She's just had a you refit. You stupid, bungling idiot, Povey. Look at me trousers. They're above me ankles already. So they are, sir. Going up. <laughs> ah, Chief, I'm sure you can come to the Admiral's assistance. Uh, me, sir. You, sir. I believe I'm correct in thinking that you have connections with a certain local draper. A tra draper, sir? <laughs> Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, well, we have met at the Needlework Guild. <laughs> yes, you know, just to pass the time of stitch, oh, the time of day. Look at him, look at him. I look like the oldest member of the boys' brigade in a minute. <laughs> well, the chief will fix you up with a new pair from a friend in the trade, won't you, chief? Uh, yes, with pleasure, sir. Ichabod is always pleased to get new business. Splendid. And in the meantime, I happen to know there are plenty of blankets in the stores to keep the Admiral warm. Blankets? Oh, oh, yes, well, well, I, I wouldn't be too sure, sir, that just at the moment, you see... Wouldn't the, you, the... Chief? I would. You would, sir? Yes, just before we left for Falmouth, I took the precaution of removing that floggle-toggle from the three-tonner again. Oh, well, in that case, they'd also... I? <laughs> Take the Admiral along to Ichabod, Chief. Uh, no, no, not likely. He'll cut me up into little pieces and stitch me up again in the wrong order. The Admiral's <laughs> waiting, Chief. Yeah, so is Ichabod waiting, sir. Well, I... I hope you'll be very happy together, Chief. <laughs> Lovely spot, this. So quiet. Real bit of old England. Don't you think so, Mr. Phillips? Oh, rather, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> That was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Burry, and John Pertwee working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, the Admiral was Terriel Evans, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, and Bracewell was played by Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Stephen Murray, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips.
It's no good telling our island draft that Edison Bell invented the telephone. They are convinced it was George Stevenson because the only thing they ever get out of a phone is a rocket. Today is no exception. Hello, number one here. This is Commander Fermi, Portsmouth. Oh, good morning, sir. I had no idea you were still speaking to us. I am not, but unfortunately I've got to. Oh, well, there's no need to force yourself. It can't be our turn to cough another load of muck yet, surely. <laughs> On the contrary, it's mine. CNC's instructed me to use you lot again. Well, nobody can say you have all the luck, can they, sir? They certainly cannot. Mr. Murray, when I heard you were to be the new number one of the island draft, I was delighted. Oh, thank you very much. I had I was delighted because I thought at last I would have an ally to get some sense knocked into those disgraceful, scheming nitwits over there. Instead of that, what happens? You've got one extra disgraceful, scheming nitwit. <laughs> Precisely. Why their lordships didn't put me in command of that mob, I'll never know. Well, my guess is that they tried, but CPO Pertwee scotched it. Number one. Will you kindly stop being facetious and playing fast and loose with a future rear admiral? Good gracious me, when did this happen? It hasn't. <laughs> As yet. But if I manage to get you lot working, it'll be the least their lordships can do. For a start, you're to join a home feed exercise tomorrow morning. Well, it's jolly nice of you to invite us, sir, but if you don't mind, we've got quite a bit to do here. Number I... one, I am not inviting you, I'm ordering you. Oh, well, in that case, um, we accept. <laughs> Thank you very much. You'll make for Dover in Troutbridge, where it will be your task to seek out and engage the destroyer Tarnia in a mock action. Aye, aye, sir. I repeat, mock action. <laughs> we shall not be issuing any medals if you sink her. <laughs> Kindly remember that Tarnia belongs to us. Yeah, we'll do our best, sir. Goodbye, sir. Not goodbye, number one. Au revoir. I shall be coming with you. Oh, splendid. Would you like to sit with your back to the engine or facing it? No. <laughs> Mr. Phillips. Now, where's that idiot got to? Ah, Heather. Good morning, sir. Uh, Heather, have you seen any sign of our Leslie this morning? No, sir. He's overslept again, I presume. Well, I've no idea, sir. I should hope not, indeed. <laughs> Although, uh, <laughs> it's a wonder he hasn't got you organized into bringing him a cup of tea from the galley about nine. Oh, he did ask. <laughs> Once. Yes, I imagined he would have done. Well, if the moron won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed will have to go to the moron. You're going to wake him up, sir? Uh, well, let's not be too ambitious. He's been half asleep for years. <laughs> I shan't be long. Oh, sir. Yes? He likes two lumps. <laughs> Hello, main office. Hello, Heather. This is Chiefy. <laughs> oh, is it? Then whatever it is, you got yourself into it, so you get yourself out of it. You're suspicious, that's what you are, Heather. <laughs> You're suspicious. All I wanted was to know if Mr. Phillips was there. Well, he's not. Why? What do you want him for? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, then why all this interest? No, there isn't any. It's just that the whole of Chief Petty Officer Pertwee's business activities depend on knowing where all superior officers are at any given time. <laughs> Mr. Phillips is adrift. <laughs> oh, he'll turn up. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to guard against. Well, I'll let you know if I hear anything. Right, bye. Ah, good morning, Heather. Welcome. Where have you been? Having the old beauty sleep, of course. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Number one wants you. What? Oh, lummy. Uh, 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 coming, sir. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's not in there. Oh, well. I suppose it'll dawn on him eventually. He's on his tod in there. Mohammed has been wasting his time, Heather. The moron wasn't there. Well, he's in your office now, sir. Is he really? <laughs> Heather? Mm hmm Did you hear what I heard? I'm afraid I did, sir. <laughs> the 
Liberty taker. Come in. You buzzed, Mr. Phillips? Uh, yes, number one, I buzzed. Uh, where's number one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, a, a, a one. <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, wonder how that happened. <laughs> uh, must have been a fuse. Hmm, probably. Irritating noise. It certainly is, sir. Z -z 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 -z. <laughs> Shocking. Mm, liable to wake a chap up. <laughs> oh, not me, sir. I can sleep through it. <laughs> you, uh, <clears throat> you wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Mr. Phillips, I did. Much earlier. Oh, lummy. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> some people reckon I'm worth waiting for, sir. <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> but I'm not one of them. Uh, neither am I. Um, I mean, uh, what's, um, what's uh, uh, cooking, sir? Lunch. You missed breakfast. <laughs> if you meant that you were feeling sufficiently rested to take an interest in naval matters, Commander Povey has informed me that we're taking part in an exercise tomorrow. We are, sir. You know, they never learn, do they? <laughs> Apparently not. We're to engage the destroyer Tanya in a mock action. Oh, I've been to one of those, huh? Yes, I got six tin spoons for a fiver. <laughs> mock action, not auction, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, yes. We sail for Dover. Um, that, for your information, is on the southeast coast of England. Oh, where's that, sir? <laughs> oh, yes, cool, I know, yes, I... I remember it well, sir, yes. Good. We sail first thing tomorrow morning, and we'd be all terribly grateful if you tried to be up in time. I'll do my very best, sir. Chancellor! Chancellor! Thump! Thump! Thump, tea thump, tea thump, tea thump, tea thump, thump. <laughs> Got you, you devil. Under the spreading chestnut tree, the village fat so stands. <laughs> Hello, Chief. I've nearly emptied all the stuffing out of these blank shells. I'm delighted to hear it. Otherwise, I'd have emptied all the stuffing out of you. Why do you want all these blank shell cases emptied anyway, Chief? You must know quite a few of my relatives have got birthdays coming up. Oh, what are you going to do? Collect all this gunpowder and send them presents that blow up? <laughs> no, not likely, my son. They're a sight too useful, my relatives, for extracting the pride of the family out of the sediment. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with all these empty shell cases, then? Nothing. But you are. What? You're going to cut the bases off, polish them up, and hey, Preston Pans, brass ashtrays from Jonesy. <laughs> Stores here, wrong number, good morning. Now I know what they mean. What do you mean? The people who put them notices in phone box saying, be brief. <laughs> Hello, Duke of Tutin's residence. <laughs> ah, good morning, your grace. Number one. Hey, oh, oh, um, his, uh, his tooting ship is out fishing with his off. <laughs> is he really? Well, then I shall have to make do with you, shan't I, Pertwee? Oh, 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 it's you, sir. <laughs> uh, must, must have been a cross line, sir. Yeah, quite. It's probably the one the Duke's horse was fishing with. <laughs> oh, very funny, sir. <laughs> And I know who's been caught. <laughs> We're joining a home fleet exercise in the morning, Chief, so I want trout bridge made ready. Oh, I see. And you'd better make sure you've got plenty of tropical kits and fur coats aboard. Tropical kits and fur coats? Yes. We're supposed to be going to Dover, but with Mr. Phillips' navigation, goodness knows what route we should take. <laughs> oh, make sure we are prepared for everything, sir. Good. And don't forget we need plenty of blank shells. Blank shells? That's right. And, um... Don't get any ideas of pinching the cases after we've fired them and making them into ashtrays. 
<laughs> Just for once, I was ahead of you, eh? Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, sir. No. More of a dead heat. <laughs> well, see you aboard, then. Oh, I see. Chief. Well? Are we on an exercise? Yes. And does number one want all them blank shells that I've emptied? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what giggle niggle, may I ask, is so aesthetic clerical? The Duke of Tutin's in the sediment again. <laughs> Now, look, you built up, you potty peasant, you. All right. Shall I fill up all these blanks again, then? What, Neville? And have my relatives disappointed on their birthdays? No, certainly not. Oh, well, there's only one thing for it. What? We'll have to take live shows instead. Oh, yeah. Oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> no one will know the difference until they fire them, will they? <laughs> <laughs> and then when they fire them... They... <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Come back here, batter pudding. <laughs> Where did you're going? I'm not going on that exercise for a start. Not with them live shells whizzing about. My mum Min son's reporting sick. Your mum Min son's doing nothing of the sort. Oh, yes, he is. He's reporting sick. <coughs> See? <laughs> Nasty cough. But you'll have a bump on the bonce and a boot in the back room to go with it in a minute. <laughs> oh, rotten you are. You be quiet, you glow body. Now, look, waddle over to the armory and get those live shells aboard. But supposing we have to fire them? Who cares? Mr. Phillips's navigation never gets us anywhere, and the gunnery officer's aim never hits anything. <laughs> We're in the clear. Now, get loading them shells. <laughs> Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Uh, gingerly. <laughs> Left stand down a bit. Uh, gingerly it is. This is about all I needed. What's that, sir? First I get lumbered with this idiot's navigation, and now this. Fog. Thick. Thick. Fog. Well, that's all right, sir. Nothing to worry about. I shall rely on radar. Oh, that's going to be a bit tricky, sir. Oh, why? Well, sir, it may have escaped your notice, but we sort of... Lost our radar and radio mast getting away from the island. <laughs> Did we really? You know, I thought I heard something go. Good grief. He leaves his mast hanging up on the gasworks gantry like old Mother Riley's washing, and he thought he heard something go. Well, don't worry, sir. He'll probably pick it up on the way back. Uh, Bridge, uh, Sub Lieutenant Washing. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Sub Lieutenant Gasworks. Wash um, I mean, Phillips here. Uh, well, what? what? Oh, one moment. Uh, uh, Chief for you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> uh, hello? Uh, Chief for the officer, please. It's me, Chief. Johnson. Can I have a boat? A boat? What for? To row me home. <laughs> this fog's bad for me nasty cough. <coughs> See? <laughs> now you can't have a boat. Get back to the armory. I'm there now. And all them live shells are pointing at me. <laughs> Look, relax, Chumbo. They haven't made one big enough to get through you. Mr. Phillips, mm -hmm. have you any idea where we are? What in this weather, sir? Not the foggiest. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course I have. Where? Where? Oh, where? Um, now, nah, yes, now then, yes. Well, uh, well, as near as I can tell you, sir, we're, we're on course. On what course? Well, that's not quite fair, sir. <laughs> You're trying to pin me down. I knew it, he's lost us again. No, you, no, I haven't. You're with me and we're, we're all in the, um... Ship ahead, sir. Ship? What? <laughs> uh, oh, yes, uh, what ship? Well, I think it's the one you've been looking for, sir. It's the Isle of Wight Ferry from Portsmouth. <laughs> ah, that's more like it, Pertwee. T -t Tag on behind. Tag on behind it is, sir. <laughs> there you are. I told you we were on course. <laughs> All we got to do is to follow him back to ride and pick up the channel boat and we'll be in Dover in no time. <laughs> 
And all I hope is the navigating officer on that ferry knows a bit more about navigation than left hand down a bit, or this may well turn out to be an Antarctic expedition. <laughs> Um, right hand, um, up a bit. Right hand, uh, up a bit it is, sir. <laughs> this is ludicrous. Stark staring ludicrous. Uh, I must admit, this ferry seems to be taking a time getting to ride, sir. Taking a time? We've been following that confounded thing for two days. <laughs> well, of course, you know their trouble, don't you, sir? They are lost. <laughs> And we are not, I suppose, well, Mr. Phillips. If only this beastly fog would lift a bit, we might see a fisherman we could ask. <laughs> oh, don't you worry, sir. It can't be much longer now. Mind you, don't lose that ferry, Chief. Oh, I said. Just keep your eye on the luggage boot. <laughs> oh, really? I know just what's going to happen. We're going to be the Flying Dutchman all over again. But where are they? That's what I want to know. Where are the fools? Well, I've no idea, sir. Really? Well, haven't you any idea? Three days and not a sign of them. They could have rowed the thing to Dover by now. Well, perhaps they're lost, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. I hardly think so, no. No, they're probably lost. <laughs> well, what I can't understand is why they haven't radioed for a position. What's that? Radio? Oh, I can tell you that one. Some idiot at the gas board gave me a ring the other day. They've left their mast hanging on his gantry like a lot of old Mother Riley's washing. Oh, dear. Well, of course, sir, it has been terribly foggy and accidents will happen. Well, that's no excuse, is it? Mind you, it's been terribly foggy and accidents will happen, I suppose. Hello, main office. Hello. Intelligence here. <laughs> Got a call for you. <laughs> Mrs. Hello, Commander Bracewell, Intelligence Officer Botsman here. I wanted to chew the fat over this trout bridge keeper. I beg your pardon, sir. Just a routine, you know, but perhaps you can help. Me, sir? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the ticket. Now then, uh, did you notice any indications that they were liable to do a bunk behind the old iron curtain? What? Any little thing. A small sign that might have seemed trivial at the time, like uh, learning Russian and uh, calling each other comrades. No, I most certainly did not. Oh, I see. Well, it looks bad, doesn't it? Oh, dear, 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 dear. But you're wrong. They're probably only lost. Come off, you old girl. If that was so, why haven't they used their radio? Ask the gas board. <laughs> gas board? Well, they left their radio mast hanging on the gasworks gantry. They can't send a signal. Can't? Oh, really, this is a bit much. Nobody tells us a blind thing up here. Oh, really. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm curtain indeed. Here I say, I've just thought of something. What, Admiral? I suppose they haven't gone behind the iron curtain, have they? <laughs> On the other lock a bit. On the other lock a bit, it is, sir. It'll be the mystery of the century. Year in and year out, sailors will report seeing an unmanned frigate called Troutbridge sailing the high sea. It's certainly a bit much. I'm, I'm going to give that ferry boat a lot of nasty talking to when we do get to ride. Uh, you know, Mr. Phillips, sir, mm? there's something been bothering me for some days. Bothering you, Chief? Uh, yes, sir. But that ship's stone's a bit big for a ferry boat, isn't it? Well, the Isle of Wight's pretty popular, you know, so I suppose they've had to put on a bigger ship on the... <laughs> but we... So... Uh, close the gap between us a bit. Uh, well, sir, at this stage of the game, do you think that's wise? I mean, ignorance is bliss, and what we don't know can't come out at your court-martial. And... <laughs> close the gap, Chief. Let's see if we can read her name. Uh, no, no, Pertwee's right, sir. Absolutely right. I, no, no sense in upsetting ourselves now. We're bound to end up somewhere, so why spoil the surprise? 
For goodness sake, stop arguing, all of you, and close up. Oh, I oh, see. Uh, that's it. Uh, a bit more. B- a bit more. Give me the glasses, number one. Thank you. Now then. Got it. T A T A N. Oh, no, it can't be. Oh, yes, it can. T A N I A. Tanya. Tanya? Now, where have I heard that name before? (laughs) That is the destroyer we were supposed to engage off Dover, you idiot. What? Oh, oh, Lord. So so it was. Well, that's all right, then, isn't it? All right? Yes, I found the enemy, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Target dead ahead, sir. Not bad, that, considering we've been in thick fog all the way. Uh, Mr. Phillips, sir. We've also had the enemy with us all the way. I had noticed, but no sense in opening fire until we were certain. Opening, opening fire? Oh, blimey, no, sir. No, no, you, you let them be. There's a good Mr. Phillips. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, let's engage Tanya and get it over with. Yeah, well, that's what I'm afraid of, sir. I mean, why bother, sir? What harm have those lads on board had ever done us, sir? That's what I want to do. They, look, all they wanted was to serve their country. From far and wide, they heard the call, the call to duty. <laughs> there is one man they stood beneath the flag and jolted without a thought for life or limb. Oh, do shut up. Oh. <laughs> if I may make a suggestion, sir, the exercise was four days ago, so there's not much point Number in one, that. our orders were to seek out and engage Tanya in a mock action, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And this is one action that's got the mockers on it, all right? <laughs> uh, now, give me the loud hailer. Now then. Ahoy there, Tanya. This is Troutbridge. Do you surrender? Perhaps they're out, sir. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Give them a toot first. Aye, aye. Give them a toot at tea, sir. Is the storm reply? <laughs> ah, well, that settles it. We open fire. At destroyer ahead, fire one. Uh, at, at destroyer ahead, fire one at Tessa. I imagine you probably are, sir. That seems to have been a live round you just pooped off. <laughs> oh, nice shooting, sir. I think you clouted the railings on the back of her. <laughs> clouted the railings on the... Oh, I'm ruined. I'm ruined, you idiots. Now look what you've done. We have, sir. With all due respect, sir, you gave the fire order. Uh, Mr. Phillips, sir, look out, sir. What? Where, eh? Where? Where? Uh, port bow, sir. What? Port, look, sir. Oh. Over there. Where? Oh. There's a bint with a dud torch in her mitt. <laughs> what? A bint with a dud torch in her mitt. <laughs> oh, good grief, it's the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> the S- Statue of Liberty? Good gracious. What on earth is that doing outside Ride Harbour? <laughs> Mr. Phillips, you've really gone too far this time. Yes, about 3,000 miles too far. I'll have a lot of you drummed out of the service for this. Now, I'll probably get drummed out myself, but I'm taking every last man of you with me. Oh, now, if I may make so bold, sir, I wouldn't advise that. No. <laughs> wouldn't advise it. No. Now, it's just a thought, sir, but uh, uh, when, you, when you read the name on a stone through them uh, binoculars, <laughs> uh, did you happen to observe if the name appeared to be a bit one-sided and... On the skew? <laughs> what? Oh, well, well, now you mention it, it, um, it did seem to be a bit off-centre, but what's that got well, to do well, with... That's what I was afraid of, sir, you see. Uh, fortunately, you only caught it a glancing blow, but it'll look bad if it leaks out. If what does, Chief? It all sounds most intriguing. Yeah, well, it's just a thought, sir, but, well, uh, <clears throat> the thing is, was it Tanya or Tanya? What's the difference? Well, quite a bit, sir, you see. 
if it was tinier and it happened to have Mori round the other side. Mauritania? Oh, no! Well, I'm not saying it was Mauritania, sir, but, well, well, here we are with uh, that bent with the dud torch in our mitten. Well, <laughs> what am I going to do? Any suggestions, Chief? I rather imagine you will have. Uh, yes, sir, a uh, pleasure, sir. Seeing as we only clouted the railings on the backs, uh, well, <laughs> I, I thought if we sort of nip back a bit sharpish, Commander Povey might see fit to make a report that owing to inclement weather, I mean, I hear you. A dirty great folk. We've uh, been an anchor off the island all the time. But that's rather a shocking fib, isn't it, Chief? Oh, never mind what it is. I'll do it. I, I'm not going to lose my commission over a yard or two of railings. Ah, uh, most gratifying. Head for home, then, Mr. Phillips. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, uh, nothing much, sir. Well, get going, man. Uh, sir, certainly, sir. Uh, Mr. Phillips, uh, uh, you wouldn't perchance be waiting for the Isle of Wight ferry to show us the way? <laughs> well, of course not. Of course. <laughs> As if I would. <laughs> uh, Chief. Sir. How soon before the Queen Elizabeth passes the bint with the dud torch in her mitt on her way back? <laughs> <laughs> that was Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, Heather was Heather Chasen, and Bracewell was Michael Bates. The recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston. Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray. When it comes to popping the question, we all have a different approach. Some chance it with their rheumatism and get down on one knee. Others ask, how about it, girl, during a lull from the jukebox? while a chap like Sub-Lieutenant Phillips forgets what the question was, anyhow. I say, Heather. Hmm? I've been thinking. Well, I suppose it was bound to happen sometime. <laughs> well, it was just that, um... Uh... Well, I was, uh... Uh... I mean, I... I hardly liked to. <laughs> that is, I, um... <laughs> um, Heather? Well? Yes, yes, thank you. Remarkably well. <laughs> I meant well. What was the question? Question? What question? Oh, yes. <laughs> the question is silly on me. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, yes, yes, I've been thinking. Now, Heather, we've known each other quite a, quite a long time now, haven't we? Yes. And we, we've always got on jolly well together, haven't we? Yes. Well, there comes a time when a chap... Um... <laughs> uh, well, uh, 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 needs somebody... Needs somebody? Yes, desperately. I, I tell you, Heather, I, I can't go on like this much longer. Oh. <laughs> Leslie, I, well, I don't know what to say. I, well, I'm very fond of you. I but... say, are you really? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course I am. Oh. <laughs> well, the question is, are, are you sufficiently fond of me? Well, what do you mean? Well, I, I know you probably refuse, but, um, well, Heather... Yes? 
Will you, will you sew some buttons on my shirts? <laughs> You're joking, of no, course. It's no joke, old girl. I'm, I'm freezing. <laughs> Every time I, I breathe out, there's a, there's a gap and... <laughs> a shocking draft whips round my... Good um... luck to me. <laughs> I hope we have a gale. <laughs> but Heather, an icy blast like that can do a frightful lot of damage. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, blow, blow, thou winter wind. You're causing a draft where it's... <laughs> most unkind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, all right, I'll sew them on for you, you abominable snowman. Will you? Oh, thanks awfully. I I'll... I'll go and get the first dozen now. <laughs> first dozen? Oh, well, there's my long winter evenings taken care of. I shan't be long. No, 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 wait. You, you better leave it until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Do you mean I've, I've got to go on hoisting my, 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 my Shannon over my fastnet for another day? <laughs> well, haven't you forgotten the date? The captain's due back off leave today. Well, Lieutenant Commander Stanton, I didn't, I didn't even know he was on leave. Well, he hasn't been here. Well, there's nothing to go by, is it? <laughs> As a rule, he's either out fishing or mucking about with mud looking for worms. Well, do you think you ought to tell number one that the captain's liable to pop in for a minute or two? After all, they've never met. Oh, it doesn't matter. If they bump into each other, they can count rings on each other's sleeves and figure it out for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, perhaps you're right. I I'll, I'll tell him straight away. Oh, well, there's number one anyway. Uh, coming. You buzzed, sir? Gracious me, is the outer office on fire, Mr. Phillips? Better why? Well, I've never got your perky little titfer to come round that door in less than a dozen zizzies since I got here. <laughs> oh, no, sir, that's not quite fair, you know. I mean, I once did it in 11. 12. <laughs> Although I admit one dead heat. As I zizzed, you shot in like a cork out of a bottle and fell flat on your perky little titfer. <laughs> Yes, precisely. Uh, by the way, sir, there's something I wanted to tell you. Well, it'll have to wait. Mr. Phillips, why wasn't I told that the captain returns from leave today? Hey, well, that's a funny thing. It just so happens that I was about and to... And don't um... pretend you were just about to tell me, because it's too late. Very remiss of you. Yes, but I... But I, I never I... mind the excuses. Now, then, what was it you wanted to tell me? Oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, me? Tell you, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Heather's going to sew some buttons on my shirt, sir. Is she really? I'm delighted to hear it. I've noticed that whenever you remove your jacket, it only needs a slight draft for you to resemble a regatta in full sail. <laughs> it's a great relief, sir. Yes, quite. Although she won't be able to tackle them for a week or two yet, will she? Why not, sir? She's got to sew all mine on first. <laughs> Hello, number one here. A jetty guard here, sir. Abel Seaman Goldstein. There's a rum-looking rowing boat heading this way, sir. I beg your pardon? It seems to be drifting, sir. There's a chap in a fishing hat sitting in the star and fast asleep. What? He, he's not wearing a naval uniform, is he? Hang on a minute, sir. <laughs> hey, guess who, sir? Lieutenant Commander Stanton. Bullseye. Shall I poop off a couple of rounds to wake him up, sir? Oh, well, certainly not, Goldstein. We shall come down to the jetty at once. Aye, aye, sir. If the tide brings him in, I'll grab him and hold him till you get here. Yes, you do that. Goodbye. Uh, the captain's back, sir. Well, vaguely. For some reason, he appears to be drifting in a rowing boat offshore. Oh, uh, I can tell you the reason, sir. What? He's lost his oars. <laughs> He always does. Gracious me, how careless. <laughs> Costs us about 30 pairs a year. Well, wouldn't it be cheaper for him to have an outboard motor? Oh, not really. He's lost five of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll get down to the jetty, and in the meantime, you'd better chase the chief out of the stores in case we have to salvage the captain with the launch. Aye, aye, sir. To me, from me, to me. Oh, get in there. To me, bit more. Bother, start again. Johnson? What? 
Johnson, that's the 14th bottle I've heard break this morning. Now, what are you doing? Breaking bottles. <laughs> I know you're breaking bottles, you ham-handed, fumble-fisted, lumbering great elephant. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to put a ship in a bottle, see? <laughs> Look, Johnson. That's me. Oh, no, it's you. <laughs> you haven't got it quite right, have you? Haven't I, Chief? No, no. Look, a model of victory in full sail ain't going into a tonic water bottle unless you lower the masts first, you clock. <laughs> You're pulling my leg, aren't you, Chief? <laughs> and what makes you think I should wish to be so bold with your lower extremities? <laughs> because they're made of pipe cleaners. <laughs> what, your lower extremities? No. <laughs> The mast, see, the mast oh, on the, the boat. Oh, yeah. The mast don't lower, you see, they're stuck. Well, so are you, my son. <laughs> stuck with a ship that won't go in a bottle. Oh, I know, I know. Couldn't I cut the base off the bottle and put me ship in from the other end? No, no, you couldn't. Why not? Because a relative of mine's doing that all day long in a souvenir shop. <laughs> and you don't take very kindly to trade competition. Well, surely people don't buy ships in bottomless bottles, do they? Oh. But it's not until they get them out of the shop they discover they are bottomless. Don't they bring them back and complain? For all the good it does them, always. <laughs> However, no mistakes can be rectified once my relative has got his paws on their lolly, so that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, giggle gurgle. <laughs> but I'll have a fat little Johnson shoved in a bottle and put on my desk. Mm, you do and I'll <sighs> all over the glass. <laughs> What'll you do then? And I'll write rude words backwards in the steam. <laughs> don't you dare, Johnson. Don't you dare. But it... Ah, there you are, Chief. Have you seen Mr. Phillips anywhere? No, sir, he hasn't been. I... <laughs> You're here, sir. What? Oh, so I am. <laughs> I, I thought I was lost. Um... You have been for years. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, number one wants us all down at the jetty at once. Was well, he fallen in? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the captain's back. Well, almost. Almost? Yeah, number one wants the launch to stand by to tow him in. I knew it. He's lost his oars again. <laughs> if only he'd hold on to one. It would cut down the losses a bit, wouldn't it? Well, he did once, sir. And he punted his way back from South Sea like a gondolier who hadn't passed his test. <laughs> You know, I, I took out a girl punting on a river once. <laughs> really, sir? Did you enjoy it? Rather, she, she was jolly good at it. <laughs> <laughs> she was? What did you do, sir? Lean back with your parasol and munch the odd grape or two? <laughs> well, of course not. I was navigating. Cool. Stone me. <laughs> I bet her arms didn't half ache by the time you found the way back. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, Chief, but um, the hire of the punt came to £23.10. <laughs> How much? £23.10. Cool. I reckon the bloke who wore the boats out was pleased to see you back. Do you know, I believe he was, actually. Mm. He's a nice chap. Had a little shop where he used to sell ships in bottles. Oh. <laughs> How gay. <laughs> Yeah, what do you say, sir? Yeah, it's funny that. I, I bought one, but the bottle hadn't got a bottom in it. Oh, what a shame. Yes, strange, you know. I, 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 I never noticed until I got outside the shop. <laughs> nice chap he was. You know, not unlike you to look at. Me? <laughs> oh, purely an optical delinquency, sir, for which I have an explanation. I see. wish I could remember the name over the shop. Oh, no, you don't, sir. No, uh, you wish... Par, par, uh, no, per, per, no, per, per, no. Partridge? No, 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 port, no. Port. No, per, no. Pert, Pert. No, Mr. Pert. Uh, the captain, uh, the captain. Pert? The captain. Pert? Mr. Pert? The captain. The captain. Which, uh, the captain. Oh, will you tell him to go? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lummet, the captain. Yeah, quick. We, we better get down to the jetty at once. At the double. <laughs> Hello, main office. Jetty guard, as I love. Captain's aboard and the whole lot of them are heading back to the office. Oh, he landed all right then? In a manner of speaking, yes. He took the launch, two boat hooks, a rope and a lot of bad language, but he's here. 
Well, thanks for the warning. Well, it's a poor dwarf. We can't help each other, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. Good. I'll be bringing some shirts over for rebuttoning. <laughs> There's a draft whipped from my... No! <laughs> In you go, sir. Home sweet home at last. Yeah, I never thought I'd get my little tootsies on terra firma again. Went out for a bit of fishing. Lost me wagglers overboard. <laughs> Your, your waters, huh? Me wagglers, old fruit, me oars. <laughs> oh, your oars, sir. Well, jolly bad luck, sir. Yes, it would. Who said that? I did, sir. Uh, this is your new number one, sir, Lieutenant Murray. Oh, how did you? Name's Stanton. I'm the captain. Do you fish at all? Um, no, sir. What did you say your name was? Murray, sir. Oh, that's odd. I thought I heard someone say his name was Stanton. No, Murray. No, 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 that's not right. My name's not Murray, it's Stanton, old fruit. No, sir, I meant mine is. Yours is? <laughs> Extraordinary thing. <laughs> what is it? We're both named Stanton. You <laughs> 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 see, uh, what's your father's name, old sport? Uh, Philip, sir. No, no, not you, you idiot. <laughs> is? It's Murray, sir. Murray. Murray Stanton. No, I don't know him, no. <laughs> Pity, I thought for a moment we must be related. Well, oh, sir, did you enjoy your leave? No, no, I didn't, no. Went to Whittlesea Bay for a bit of fishing, lost me wagglers, you know. <laughs> Fell asleep waiting to catch a big fella. When I woke up, guess what? No wagglers? That's right, yes. <laughs> there they were. Gone. Hello, Lieutenant Murray speaking. This is Commander Burley, Portsmouth. Has Lieutenant Commander Stanton arrived yet? Uh, yes, sir. He's just uh, drifted in. Drifted in? Uh, that, that's right. He's lost his wagglers. Wagglers? What on earth are we... Oh, let me speak to him. Aye, aye, sir. Is Commander Purvey for you, sir? Hello, I'm out, Purvey. <laughs> uh, cheer up, sir. Uh, perhaps he just wants to know if you've enjoyed your leave. Yeah. You're a bigger blind optimist than ever, aren't you? <laughs> Hello, I'm back again, Stanton here. Ah, I've a little news for you, Stanton. Ah, well done. You found me wagglers. <laughs> no, I have not. But I've got a stinking letter from a firm in Whittlesea Bay who hires boats for fishing. Ah. Mm. They want to know when Lieutenant Commander Stanton is likely to let them have their boat back. But he hired it three days ago and they haven't seen him since. Oh, oh, uh, oh Lord. Yeah, but for goodness sake, get that confounded boat back to them at once. Before they whip one of ours as a reprisal. Oh, I'd see to it at once, yes. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, old sport. <laughs> Here, uh, I say, number one, uh, what's your name? Um, Smith. <laughs> Smith, uh, unusual name. I, uh, <laughs> I say, that, that other chap, Stanton Murray, didn't last long, did he? <laughs> oh, dear. They come and go, you know, they come and go. There's a, there's a bit of a flap on over that rowing boat. Yeah, so I gathered, sir. Yeah, well, I suppose we'd better tow it behind the launch and get it back to Whittlesea Bay at once. Aye, aye, sir. I'll get the chief to see to it. Good show, fruit, yes. I, I'd better come with you, I suppose. Bound to be a rumpus over those lost wagglers always is. Left hand, uh, ever so slightly down a bit. <laughs> Left hand, ever so slightly down a bit, it is. <laughs> um, alter course bearing green 5 0, coxswain. Alter course bearing green, I? <laughs> Uh, don't ask me what it means. I read it in the book once. <laughs> oh, well, in future, sir, I should stick to memoirs of a frightened fan dancer. <laughs> or the selected works of Edgar Allan Poe, sir. Eh? <laughs> Why? Why? Well, if you start dabbing in navigation, Lieutenant Mitchell, sir, we shall never know where we are. <laughs> oh, I see, yes. <laughs> That's quite a thought, isn't it? What's the thought? Where are we? <laughs> Well, we should be just off Whittlesea Bay, sir. I say, are we really? My word, this, this bearing green 5-0 nonsense really works, doesn't it? Well, hardly, Mr. Phillips. If the chief has taken any notice of your navigation orders, I calculate we should be off the coast of Holland. Eh? <laughs> 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 here, here, I see. Pretty sight, aren't they? Uh, what, sir? All those windmills over there. <laughs> 
come on, say the windmills. Windmills? Windmills, yes, those buildings with uh, with wagglers on them, you know. The <laughs> Yes, um, quite, sir. Uh, Chief. Uh, yes, sir. Have you or Mr. Phillips any idea what those pretty windmills are doing in Whittlesea Bay? Carnival nights? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's odd, isn't it? And they must have put them up overnight. <laughs> I wonder why. It's strange, isn't it? I mean, that is the countryside at all. Yes. Sort of flat, isn't it? Must have been a juice of a job levelling out all those hills that used to be there. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, there is one other possible explanation. Huh? What's that, sir? This is Holland. It is, sir. Huh? What's Whittlesea Bay doing in Holland? <laughs> Probably looking for us, sir. Chief? Sir? What have you stopped engines for? Well, I didn't have much choice, sir, without the juice. Well, then you should have brought some more. I mean, you should know what I'm like by now. Yes, sir. <laughs> I do know, and if I'd put so much as one more pint of fuel aboard before we'd started, we'd have gone down like a stone. <laughs> Last of me poop deck. It never fails, does it? What, sir? Lovely spot for fishing like this. I haven't got me rods with me. Uh, what now, sir? Well, I suppose we'll just have to make a signal to Pompey for assistance. Oh, I'll say, I'll say to it at once. Uh, tell him we haven't lost our wagglers, but we're stuck just the same. <laughs> well, how much longer we're going to be stuck here? Well, not long, I should imagine, sir. Commander Povey's coming personally, sir. What? Oh, lummy. Trust old Death's head to be in at the feast. <laughs> maddening, that's what it is, maddening. I could, I could have caught hundreds of the little blighters by now. There'll be a big fellow along in a minute, you see. You're right, sir. A big fellow called Povey. <laughs> hey, 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 what's going on? We're rolling a lot, aren't we? Positive cha-cha-cha, sir. <laughs> Yeah, it's the big fellow surfacing, that's what it is, yeah. The word's gone round down there, that's what it is. Silly old fool left his rods behind. Let's all take the mickey, that's what they're saying down there. Tell me, it is a big fellow, look out! What the... Blazes? No, I mean, it's a submarine. What do you say? A submarine, sir. Oh, chuck it back. Cod's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> but, sir, what's that written on the side of the thing? You know, it's not English, is it? No, it's probably Dutch for this way up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course it is. <laughs> no, 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 quiet. I think the captain's going to say something. Achtung! 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 <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> in the name of the Fatherland, in the name of our glorious Führer, in the name of the Third Reich, I demand your unconditional surrender. Hail Hitler! C-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-T-A-
Aye, aye, he's off again. <laughs> right. Uh, hi there. The war is over. In the name of the... The war is over. <laughs> yes. You are sure? Yes. Who yes. won? Well, um, we did, actually. Oh! <laughs> Kamerad, then we surrender in the name of the party. Oh, built up, Borman! <laughs> Why have you built up whatever to think? Well, it's a bit of a poser, isn't it, gentlemen? We seem to have got a water bus full of prisoners. But the war is over. Kamerad! Look, don't tell us, Mr. Phillips, sir. Tell him. <laughs> This is ridiculous. How can they have kept going all this time? Well, they must have been getting supplies from somewhere, sir. Chief, you haven't been sort of, um... <laughs> sort of... Uh, no, no, no. They, 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 they're complete strangers to me, sir. So help me, I've never set eyes on the bath buns. <laughs> no, it's uh, just a thought. Pardon. Granted. <laughs> Anyway, what in Goebbels' name was that? It's a destroyer. It must be old Thunderguts. Oh. Ahoy there, this is Commander Povey. It is. Ahoy there! Cameron! <laughs> Who said that? Wait for it, lad. She'll spot the U-boat any minute now. Number one! This is it. Sir? Number one! What on earth have you done this time? Bag the U-boat, sir! <laughs> Oh, belt up, Fritz! <laughs> Don't call us, we'll call you! Here, yeah, yeah, here, number one, what's that long, wet boat thing doing out there? Eh? It's, um, it's parked, sir. Oh, eh. Lost their wagglers, I suppose. <laughs> And rule Britannia to you, mate. <laughs> well, that's uh, one all. Your move, I think, Commander Povey. Ah. Now then, Herr uh, Hunter, Sea, Bolton, Lieutenant, Mit Iron, Cross, and. Oh, <laughs> call me Hans. Much obliged. <laughs> Herr Hans, what puzzles us is how you've been getting supplies all these years. Oh, <laughs> on the black marketing. The price is over the odds, bodikins, but a nine ration book. Black market? Where, man? The friend of the fatherland in Amsterdam, Herr Ingeborg Pertwee. What? <laughs> well, no, 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 there's a thing, sir. <laughs> there's a thing. Right, well, it's a common name, sir. I mean, Smith, Brown, Pertwee, Robinson, all the world over you come across. Chief, and... have you any relatives in Holland? Uh, only Ingeborg, sir. Oh, I mean, uh, no, no, just a Dutch uncle, sir, that's all. Goodness knows how we'll ever sort this out. What their lordships are going to say when I tell them you've captured a U-boat, I dread to think. Well, as you think, sir, better late than never. <laughs> Fool! Well, you'll just have to hold the crew here until I find out if they're prisoners, refugees, or... or... Diabolical embarrassment, sir? Yeah, precisely. Uh, <laughs> you had to find them, didn't you? You just had to find uh, Yeah, with, with all due respect, sir, about a U-boat, sir, look, I'd be quite prepared to take it off your hands. I mean, I'm sure it would come in very handy for collecting... Certainly not. <laughs> it's difficult enough to discover where things go from this island now without having to send frogmen down to find out which way they went. Um, excuse me, sir, but there's a Mr. Albert Pertwee on the telephone. Oh, another of them. What's he want? Um, his boat that the captain hired four days ago, or he and his hobos are going to snitch a destroyer. Oh, blimey, we forgot, so we brought her back here again. Oh, dear, so we did. Well, we shall just have to sail for Whittlesea Bay again, shan't we? No, 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 I'll take the confounded thing myself. I'd rather. If you take it, you'll come back with the rest of the German fleet. I know you will. Oh, very well, sir, if you insist. Have a nice trip over. And mind you don't lose your wagglers on your way. <laughs> Mr. Phillips! <laughs> a 
And that was John Pertwee, Leslie Phillips and Stephen Murray working their passage in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one. Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Lieutenant Commander Stanton was Ronnie Barker, Goldstein was Tenniel Evans, Heather was Heather Chasen, and Hans was Michael Bates. The recorded program was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston. gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark with our three stars, Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee. Well, the government has declared that our continued greater prosperity depends largely on increased trade and no potential market must remain untapped. Now, this is a sentiment which is heartily endorsed by Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. There you are, Mr. Pipsgrove. I told you I'd got it, and there it is. Cheap at half the price, Mr. Pipsgrove. Mm -hmm. It really is lovely, Mr. Pertwee. Yep, yeah, this souvenir has been in the Pertwee family vaults for over 100 years, Mr. Pipsgrove. Yes, it is a bit mucky, isn't it? <laughs> well, all right then, for an extra couple of bob, I'll chuck in a duster. <laughs> <laughs> You are sure it's uh, genuine, aren't you? Genuine, Mr. Pipsgrove? Of course mm. Genuine? I'm hurt, Mr. Pipsgrove. That's what I am. I'm hurt. E-R-T hurt. <laughs> it's only a great family financial loss that forces us to sell this heirloom here door. Financial loss, eh? A crash on the stock exchange, I suppose. Well, not exactly, no, no. Our last couple of bulb. Fell at the third fence of the 3.30 on Thursday. <laughs> well, it's very tempting, Mr. Pertwee, but where could I keep a thing that size? Well, in your front garden, of course. Oh, well, it would be unique, wouldn't it? <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, you, unique, yes, of course, yeah. I, I mean to say, who else could have a flower bed with a figurehead of victory stuck in it? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know what the neighbours will say. I mean, she is rather a large lady, isn't she? The Jane Mansfield of her day, she was. <laughs> yes, yeah, still, if, if you want to paint in a bit of grey lease around the department, I've got a few gallons of dye gloss going cheap. Oh, ta. Funny, you know. <laughs> I didn't think Victory had a figurehead. I thought it was a coat of arms. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I mean, when they took this off, they had a put something on the front to cover up the screw holes, didn't they? <laughs> hmm, I never thought of that. Of course. I mean, uh, if they'd just left it, she'd have... Uh, she'd have leaked, wouldn't she? <laughs> Very likely. All right, Mr. Pertwee, I'll take it. Here's the money. Now then, when can you deliver it? Deliver it? Oh, I'm afraid we don't do no delivering. But I can't walk through the streets carrying a great big figurehead. Well, I don't see why not. You'll look lovely together. Well, <laughs> well, if I take it home like that, it'll spoil the surprise. Surprise? What surprise? Well, it's going to be a birthday present for my mother-in-law. <laughs> and if that thing staring in her bedroom window doesn't frighten the old faggot out of me house, <laughs> nothing will. Well, then why don't you carry it down to the pub, buy it a few drinks until it gets dark, and then take it home? I suppose I'll have to. That's a good lad. And take it out the back way, if you don't mind. Why? Well, I don't want you to pass number one's window with it. Oh, do you think he might object? Well, it's possible, yeah. Ooh. You see, I half promised that he could have it, and if he sees you carrying it off, well, he might get jealous. Oh, I am a lucky man, Mr. Pertwee. <laughs> you are, Mr. Pope's Grove, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now then, up with it. Over on one shoulder. Ah, ah, it's it's it. Steady now. Steady, steady. Look out, Mr. Ah, Mr. Mr. Pope's Mr. Pope's Grove. Are you, are you, Mr. Pope, are you all right? You're all a bit saggy in the knees, Mr. Pope's Grove, haven't you? Up you come. I, I knew she was top heavy. Never mind her vital statistics. <laughs> now, then. now, get it out of here before number one comes round to see what all the noise is about. Right, Al, and thanks again. <laughs> uh, oh, well, uh, Johnson? Johnson? 
Where are you, Johnson? Right behind you. <laughs> of course, tell me. Look, never do that again, Johnson, or you'll give me a tack of the allergicals. <laughs> Beg pardon, I'm sure. Right, granny. Johnson, you'll be glad to know I've sold Bessie. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> There's one born every minute, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, that is my son, and you're one of them. Yeah, eh? Now get whittling. Get whittling with that pen knife of yours. I want six more figureheads, quick. Oh, well, <laughs> that shouldn't take long, should it? <laughs> Just a chip off here and a chip off there and... Good morning. <laughs> Come back here. Pumpkin posterior. <laughs> I've got six more customers coming in for the one and only figurehead or victory. So get the next six on the assembly line, quick. Yeah, you're rotten, you are. Rotten. Rock to the tot tot again, rotten. <laughs> I'll be even rock to the tot tot totner if you don't get those figureheads made. So get on with it. I say hello. What is it now, Superman? Oh, flatterer. <laughs> no, no. Um, it seems to me that we, we've been going round together for some time now. And, uh, well... What's the matter? Are you getting dizzy? Yes, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Well, I, I, I mean, um, we, we've been going steady for some time now, haven't we? Oh, very steady. Any steadier and we'd be fossilised. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come straight to the point, Heather. Oh, well, there's a first time for everything, I suppose. Yes, and there comes a time when a, when a chap, when a, when a, when a chap um, uh, thinks about settling down. Does there, Leslie? Yes, there does. So I thought, well, I, I thought, perhaps it was, it, it was, it was time, about time. I, um, I, I, I met your mother and had a chat to her. Well, you can if you like, but it won't do you any good. Oh, why not? Because she's married already. <laughs> well, so I should Johnny will hope so. I mean, after... Oh. <laughs> no, 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 that's not quite what I meant, actually. <laughs> oh, what a pity. Mummy will be disappointed. <laughs> oh, buzzer, the bother. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, bother, the buzzer. What's number one want this time? Well, it may not be number one who wants you. Commander Povey's with him. Oh, that's all right, then. They can keep each other company until I get there, can't they? Oh, lummy. Thunder guts. <laughs> Five of them. Oh, that's Tornet. Come in! Uh, Sub-Lieutenant Tornet buzzing. Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, how many buzzes make fives? Uh, uh, Thunder guts has bothered with your buzzers. <laughs> If he settles, number one, spot him. <laughs> yes, with pleasure, sir. Mr. Phillips, Commander Povey's got a job for us which is somewhat unusual. Oh, you mean we're going to like it? No. <laughs> What's the job, sir? It's an emergency, Mr. Phillips. We have to dispose of an old wreck that's become dangerous. Oh, it's a bit drastic, isn't it, sir? I mean... Old Thunder Guts blows his top at times, but disposing of him is... What? Um, um, I think I'll, um, I, I want it in the, uh, the outer office, sir, uh, uh, urgently. No, you're not. So stop hopping up and down like a yo-yo with a string caught. <laughs> Yo-ho, sir. I, I mean, uh... <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Try and get it into your thick head that Troutbridge is to dispose of a sunken wreck that has shifted and become dangerous. I see, sir. What's the name of the ship, sir? The Mari Vallette. Why? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Just wondered when it was I sank it. <laughs> Funnily enough, Mr. Phillips, this one went down long before you were born. It may well have been your great-grandfather who did it in, but it wasn't you. Oh, a legacy. <laughs> may I add, Mr. Phillips, that whilst disposing of this wreck, their lordships would be very grateful if you didn't create another one. <laughs> I'll do my best, sir. Do. Because the only other ship that will be near you will be a salvage vessel. And I shall be on it. Well, we'll show you a lifeboat. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, uh, enjoy your swims. Uh, I'm, I'm... Oh, sort him out, number one. Certainly, sir. Mr. Phillips. Uh, sir? Shut up! Oh, sir. I... My up is now shut. <laughs> now, try to remember, both of you, that disposing of this wreck is a job for the experts on the other vessel. 
You'll just be there to assist if required. Assist, sir? Assist. Not foul up the whole operation by cutting the marker boys adrift and ramming the salvage vessel head on. Understood, sir. Except, um, just for one thing. Well? What are marker boys? <laughs> He'll do it. I know he will. There'll be marker boys all over the Atlantic. He'll play billiards with them. <laughs> I tell you what, sir. If you get to the wreck first, why not tie labels on all the boys? Property of Commander Povey, finder will have postage refunded. <laughs> postage will be... Are you mad? If he didn't cut them adrift accidentally, that conniving chief petty officer of yours would deliver them personally, then swear blind he'd posted them from Hong Kong. Uh, registered post, probably. <laughs> Actually, my suggestion was meant to be a joke. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Jolly civil of you. I can't stand any more of him, number one. Have Trotbridge prepared for sea at once. I'll signal the exact location of the wreck in a few hours. Very good, sir. We'll join you there. Eventually. Eventually? Mr. Phillips, I don't care if you use a bus map or work out your plots by counting on beads. Get Trotbridge on station at the right time or the Navy's going to lose a sub-lieutenant. Oh, you mean... My, my promotion's coming through at last. <laughs> oh, bully for Leslie. <laughs> no, I do not mean I've died. Uh, no, I've, steady, I've... sir. I've just realized what's wrong with him. The parts are all there. They're just assembled in the wrong order. <laughs> no, I'll see you later. Not else. Now, I wonder who rubbed him up the wrong way. <laughs> I doubt if you'll ever know, Mr. Phillips. Now, this trip's jolly inconvenient. I trust we shan't be away long. Oh, why, sir? Oh, nothing. It's just I was thinking it was about time I had a chat with Heather's mother. Oh, I shouldn't worry, sir. She's, um, she's already married. <laughs> uh, uh, a chat, sir? Yes. <laughs> I suppose, um, you wouldn't rather have a chat with me, sir? Hmm? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a jolly good... Chatterers, huh? <laughs> Yes, I shouldn't be surprised if you won prizes for it. <laughs> now, if we're going to be ready to put to sea, I'd better tear Chief Petty Officer Pertwee away from his current commercial dabble, whatever it is. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Pertwee loves you not. Oh, oh, me poor little thumb. Ah, pity you didn't hit your head. You might have knocked some sense into it. What's the matter now, then? Look, all I asked you to do is just knock up some figureheads. That's what I asked you to do. Not whittle and wallop away at works of art. Ah, well, it's a pity you said that, because now you've done it. Done what? You've upset me artistic temperament. <laughs> I've lost the mood. <laughs> then you better find it again, quick, Patty. <laughs> and I'll start whittling away at you. I've got customers waiting. Well, they'll have to wait. They didn't rush Henry Moore when he painted the Mona Lisa, you know. <laughs> now, look, Johnson, I've told you before. We're flogging figureheads, not doing our tapes for the tate. <laughs> but I shan't sign me name on them. They'll remain a nonny, 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 anonymous. Nonny, nonny, anonymous? That's what I said. Give or take a nonny. <laughs> The connoisseurs will haggle about them, but no one will be able to prove these are chips off Abel Seaman Johnson's block. An artistical tragic, I'm sure. Are all the people who've already bought these figureheads locals? Well, of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be for it if two of them are next-door neighbours, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not, giggle niggle. I'll swear blind the victory had figureheads at both ends. You don't miss a trick, do you? No, I don't. Watch what you're doing with those bits you're chipping off. Why? Firewood. Fourpence a bundle. Oh. <laughs> Exchange yard, just testing. One, two, three, four. Mary had a little lamb. Good morning. I bet that was a National Gallery asking me if I'd knock them up a few bits and pieces. Not unless you're listed in the phone book as Mr. Anonymous. Give or take a nonny, it wasn't. <laughs> Hello, National Gallery, yeah. Is it really, Chief? Well, this is...
Whistler's mother. Oh, hello, Mum. Oh, I mean... <laughs> no. Oh, I mean, hello. Hello, sir. <laughs> uh, we must have been cut off. No, I doubt it, Chief. The exchange just tested the line. Who? Oh, who? Oh, oh, I see. Who? <laughs> oh. Well, look, can, I, can I help you at all, sir? If you can, it'll be the first time ever. We've been called in to assist in removing a dangerous wreck. Oh, really, sir? When did Mr. Phillips hit it? <laughs> well, strangely enough, this isn't one of his. Oh, it's a nonny, nonny, anonymous. Uh, quite. Um, give or take a nonny. <laughs> uh, Chief, have Troutbridge. Chief, will you have Troutbridge made ready at once, please? Oh, I see. Uh, may I wish you a very pleasant voyage, sir? Thank you, Chief. And may I wish you one as well? You're coming with us. Uh, no, I'd rather not, sir. I, I, I just put in for compassionate leave, sir. Yes, I just sent it back, Chief. <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, but, sir... No, Chief. I'm not granting you leave just because your dear white-haired old mother can't get in and out of her bubble car unaided. <laughs> oh, well, well, well there's, there's me aunt, sir. Me aunt, it's a sad case. Struck down with our smite's knee. Tennis elbow and athlete's ankles all at the same time. No, Chief. You get Troutbridge prepared and stand by for sailing orders. Oh, oh I see. Thank you. Goodbye. <sighs> well, that's it then. That's what then? Well, I can stop whittling and walloping away at me works of art, can't I? Oh, no, you can't, podgy Picasso. <laughs> We're taking one of those figureheads with us. Whatever for? Well, look, use your loaf. With Mr. Phillips's navigation, we may end up anywhere. And if we've got one of them figureheads with us, we can open up an overseas trade. Wow. And if we end up in Africa, I could take a few extra swipes at it and turn it into a Tottenham pole, couldn't I? <laughs> a Tottenham pole? Yeah. It's pronounced Tottenham pole. <laughs> now, really? honey, yeah, well, hurry up and finish them off. And we'll get it aboard Trout Bridge. Come on. Left hand up a bit. <laughs> Left hand up a bit it is, sir. Should be on the station any second now. Ha-ha, <laughs> there's old Thunderguts and the salvage vessel. Uh, uh, Mr. Phillips, sir. Uh, Mr. Phillips, sir. What's that? Uh, the, the marker boy, sir. It's, it, the, the marker boy, sir. <laughs> It's cut adrift. Oh, bad show. They, they should have tied it up. <laughs> they did. You cut three of them loose. There's only one to go now. Oh, don't you worry, sir. I'll have it in a jiffy. Just one good whack. <laughs> oh, lummy. Ahoy there. This is Commander Povey. Ahoy. Ahoy, yo, yo. <laughs> Cheer up, sir. Perhaps he wants to know if you'd like your ball back. <laughs> Ahoy there, Commander Povey! Number one, he's got three marker boys already. For heaven's sake, drop anchor before that idiot gets game, set and match. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Mr. Phillips, sir? drop anchor. Um, aye, aye, sir. Drop anchor, Chief. Drop anchor it is, sir. <laughs> Uh, haven't you forgotten something, sir? What? We're still moving. <laughs> oh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, um, uh, uh, shove her into neutral. <laughs> shove her into neutral it is, sir. Now, for goodness sake, don't touch anything until I tell you. Please! Well, Chief, while we're waiting, I think I'll do rounds. Round, sir? You mean inspect the ship? Yes. Do you any objection? Not off. I mean, no, no. No, 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 sir. Help yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, you weren't thinking of going anywhere near ship's stores, I suppose? It? Yes, I was. As a matter of fact, I shall probably start there. Oh, well, one man starts, another man's finish. <laughs> oh, I know, sir. I've got an idea. The galley, sir. Why not start at the galley, sir? <laughs> if anything needs inspecting, it's the galley. The food that comes out of there is... Yeah, very well, Chief. I'll start at the galley. Good, sir. Then I'll inspect the stores. Bad, sir. Oh, I mean, aye, aye, sir. Come along, Mr. Phillips. You may as well join me. Join you, sir? Yes. Who knows? During our travels, you'll probably see parts of the ship you never even knew existed. <laughs> ship store. 
fours here, Abel Seaman Johnson, just testing. One, two, three, four. Mary had a little belt up! <laughs> oh. Well, that's the two of us. Two of you? Yeah, me and Van Gogh both lost their left lug holes. <laughs> Look, Johnson. What? Is that figurehead a ball? Yes. Well, hide it quick. Hide it? How can I hide a blooming great thing like that? It's enormous. Well, do the best you can. Put it at the back of the stalls and store everything you can lay your hands on in front of it. I can't, Chief. Why not? Because it's not in the stores. I couldn't get it through the door. Well, where is it, you nit? Outside the galley. Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> Number one... The galley? Yeah, the hot dinner hall. Oh, I know where the galley is, you clown! <laughs> But there's only one thing for it. Dump that figurehead overboard before number one gets there. Quick. Dump me masterpiece overboard? Certainly not. I might get an A.R.A. with it. You'll get a thick E.A.R. if you don't. <laughs> now get that flaming thing overboard. Oh, aye, aye, Chief. But it's vandalism. That's what it is. Vandalism. Yeah, I'll vandalise you in a minute. Get it over the side. <laughs> Bridge number one here. Starboard, look out here, sir. The frogmen have surfaced again. Oh, thank you, Goldstein. Oh, and there's a signal from the salvage vessel, sir. Mm -hmm. What is it? Signal reads, in case you don't know it, Lieutenant Commander Stanton is fishing off your stern again. Kindly ask him to cease immediately as he's caught two of our frogmen already. <laughs> oh, dear. Signal N, sir. I say, sir, what are those chaps in rubber suits and flat feet doing messing about in the water? They are frogmen, Mr. Phillips. Well, really, that's a bit much. I mean, there's a time and place for everything. What are you getting hot and bothered about now? Well, here we are, trying to dispose of a wreck. We have to wait while those chaps mess about trying to catch frogs. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Bridge number one here. Starboard look out here again, sir. Another signal, sir. Mm, go ahead. Signal reads, Frogmen have cleared most of wreck. Fire depth charges to clear remaining superstructure. Depth charges? Fancy old Thunderguts letting us do that. He must have gone balmy. Signal continues. I haven't gone balmy. I've no choice. <laughs> oh. Signal ends, sir. Thank you. Chief, sir, stand by the fire depth charges. Depth charges ready, sir. Well... In for a penny, I suppose. <laughs> Carry on, Mr. Phillips. Aye, aye, sir. Um, fire one. Fire one it is, sir. <laughs> oh, well done, sir. A bullseye. <laughs> uh, which way did it go? <laughs> it landed smack bang by the last marker, boy, and now that's adrift, too. Bridge, number one here. Another signal from Commander Povey, sir. Signal reads, I knew it, game, set, and match. <laughs> oh, uh, make a signal. Signal reads, Mr. Phillips, now open to offers to turn professional. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Mr. Phillips. Oh, sorry, sir, I was forgetting. Far too. Far too it is, sir. No, 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 I, I What's meant... That? You were saying, sir? Well, it's a bit late now. I was going to say, don't fire any more. <laughs> Unidentified object surfacing alongside, sir. What on earth? It's... Oh, well done, Leslie. I've hit it. <laughs> Look, sir, there's a figurehead. Figurehead? <laughs> yes. Yes, look, Chief. No, sir, I'd rather not, if you don't oh, mind. Oh, do. Do, Chief. This may be an historical moment. Yeah, very likely, sir, but I'm not keen on historical moments. 1066, the great fire of London, that's me lot. I say, what? Well, what's that figurehead? Well, it's so remarkably well-preserved, isn't it? Mmm, remarkable. Almost looks like new. Yes, I know. I know. It's, 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 oh, it's, I oh, know, it's it. It's the salt. That's what it is. It's the salt, sir. It's wonderful stuff for preserving me ties, salt, please. I say, is it really? Yeah, yes, of course, sir. That's why, that's why they put those little blue paper bags of it in crisps. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yes, of course. I was forgetting. Uh, I say, I, I just thought of something. I wonder if we can claim treasure trove. Aye? Oh, oh, well, far be it for the pert to make capital out of work of art, so I mean to say. Yeah, quite. Well, it... And I imagine it's always possible that this particular figurehead may not have come off the Marie Vallette after all. But it must have done, sir. Well, not necessarily. Eh, Chief? <laughs> now it might well be one of the many figureheads said to have come off victory well it's always possible sir i mean they were, they were off what <laughs> victory chief oh i forgot to mention that just before we sailed i had a visit from three local inhabitants of the island oh blimey all accompanied by vast and dirty great pieces of whittled timber. Yes, well, I can explain, sir. I had absolutely nothing to do with it, I'll tell you. Oh, but I rather think you must have done. Take a closer look at that figurehead over the side, Chief. Oh, I'd rather not, sir. I've never had much of a bonce for arts. Take, take a butcher's, Chief. Oh, well, if you insist, it'll be... Oh, stone me. Stone. Well, Chief? Could I have a word with Abel Seaman Johnson, sir? It's nothing much. I just want to do him a vital disaster. Let's go. What's going on? What's wrong with the figurehead? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's an excellent likeness, isn't it, Chief? What till I get my hands on the fat's niche, that's all? I'll chip away at him with a coal hammer. That's what I'll do. Like this or what? Oh, yes. Oh, jolly good. Yes. yes. And so were the other three figureheads that the gentleman trundled into my office. Every one of them has the body of a Jane Mansfield, but the face is the spitting image of Chief Petty Officer Pertwee. <laughs> hey, Mr. Phillips? <laughs> so it is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can explain, sir. It's a case of a stained calamity. So look, I've got a twin brother in the wood train. And he was trying to make down. That was Leslie Phillips, Stephen Murray and John Pertwee working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, Goldstein was Tenny Levens, and Mr. Popesgrove was Michael Bates. And the recorded production was by Alistair Scott Johnston.